Hi, it's time for Twit once again. Yes, I'm back, and I've got my sexy circle with me. John C. Dvorak, Mike Elgin, and Schwitter here to discuss the, the resume scandal at Yahoo, the newest Android phone, and wiretapping for Skype. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new WinApp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 352, recorded May 6th, 2012. Schwood drops a dude. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Squarespace.com. The fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase on new accounts. Go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT5. And don't forget, they now offer free domain registration when you subscribe to an annual plan. And by Ford, giving customers the power of choice with a full line of electric and hybrid electric vehicles. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. And by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to Audible.com slash Twit2. Don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID Audible underscore com. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers the latest technology news. And one of the best panels we have ever assembled is here with us today to welcome me back from Norway. They're not at this table, apparently. No, apparently not. <laughs> We tried anyway. No, John C. Dvorak with his Beach Boy shirt. Is this now your Twit shirt? Do you like having it hanging on a hook that says Because I get more negative comments from the chat room about they hate this it. shirt. They hate that shirt. It, Harry uh, Fuller hated this shirt when I was. This is a Tech TV uh, throwback call back shirt. And every time I wore it, it's getting Fuller a little worn. Get I'm going to wait a minute. Shape. I'm going to find somewhere that makes and sells these, and I'm going to get. Uh, 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 remind me, Eileen, to buy. John. Different colors. It's like eight different colors. Like orange. Okay. And, and we'll just have them here. But the thing is, it got to be real thick stripes. Thick, yeah, no, no. We'll find that shirt. Yeah, okay. Sure. John yeah. looks like he escaped from banana prison. <laughs> <laughs> See? I love the shirt. The no, guys are riot. No, I love it. Uh, John C. Dvorak's here. Great to have you. JohnDvorak.com. NoAgendaShow.com. Hey, this is a new thing, JohnDvorak.com? You mean Channel Did I say Dvorak? that? Did yeah. I say John? Channel Dvorak. I meant Channel. What, what was it again? Channel Dvorak. Okay. And we're going to ask him about his Pilsner in just a moment. That's what the C means, John Channel Dvorak. John oh, Channel like Dvorak. Yeah. It used to mean computer. That's Mike Elgin of Google+. Plus. I always say this because I don't know what else to say. Of Well, now I can say of uh, not only Computer World, but you're writing for, is it? Uh, a bunch of bunch, bunch of people. Of I'm writing for IDG. I'm writing for okay. Datamation. So you writing, got a real job. I'm writing for I'm writing for a new uh, site called House H O U Z Z, which is like a really nice home design thing. And I'm like the tech guy now. Well, because you know that is an issue when you yep. design a home. You want to be tech. You know, do a nice job of the tech. Homes Homes are becoming very. You know, they're becoming computers. They're going to be built into the house. The right. bathroom mirrors. Smart Smart be, Homes. Yeah. So it's a great site. Oh, this is a nice a good site. Time. I would love these some of these. Yeah, this is like Pinterest, except they own all the stuff on there. It's not. I was just going to say content. this feels like Pinterest. Yeah, what's the new layout for houses? I know it is the new thing, isn't it? It's the kind of the magazine style layout. Yeah, lots of pictures. Yeah, that's the new the new tech guy said it's going to look like that. Yep. And also here from uh, NSFW and Scam School, formerly of Game On, Mr. Brian Brushwood, <clears throat> Discovery Networks. Now a, an employee of Discovery. When is, is that didn't close, though, yet, right? <laughs> no, but I mean, it's announced, I guess. So, it's uh, announced. Revision 3 acquired by Discovery. And I'm in the weird spot where it's like, you know, I'm not actually employed by Revision 3 and don't, you know, didn't know anything going into this. Uh, so you basically got screwed in the deal. Uh, you know what? I got exactly what I signed up for. Yeah, which is, which is nothing. Which is yeah. buckus. Yeah, screwed. <laughs> yeah. Technically. So, like, but, but it's interesting because Scam School actually was the, the opening of the door to Discovery because you've been on the Discovery website. And that's website. all the thanks you get, that's, by the way. <laughs> okay. I don't like where this is headed. <laughs> yeah, no. Scam School was the first of the, the Revision 3 properties to show up on Discovery.com so in the life section. You you were the icebreaker. Uh, I you, you, in effect, popped the, the Discovery cherry. <laughs> I would As like it were. to think that. I don't know. I think it's true. 
No, it's and, and he and should he, get credit for it. Totally that. get no, he's shafted. <laughs> I believe they were independent of each other, but it was is it very flattering? And I'll tell you what, like you know, we pitched Scam School as a Discovery show for the main Discovery Channel, and in fact, I had meetings really? with uh, uh, John Ford, I believe his name. Uh, he was president of this is pre Discovery revision the time. three. No, no, no. This is this is like second year in. Once Scam School was clearly a hit. We partnered up with uh, Indigo Films. We did a series of uh, pitches. We did like That's eight very pitches. Interesting. And I full on, like, I, we went to Discovery and uh, they loved me. They loved the show, but they said, We think this would be a great companion to Cash Cab, but we're only putting money into primetime, not right. late afternoon. So thanks, but no thanks. They, they say to kill Discovery is a big company that is much more than the Discovery channels. They have, oh, I don't know how many channels, eight well, channels, I mean, nine channels, well, but they also the, have Discovery.com. They're, 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 they're owned by somebody. Are they? No, I don't think uh, so. Keep talking, I'll look it Find up. Find out who Discovery's Check owned by. The book of Knowledge. Would you, you know, get that? They already acquired. In fact, as soon as I heard about it, I called my friend uh, Jonathan Strickland over at How Stuff Works, who does the Tech Stuff podcast. They bought him. Because him specifically. How was his experience in that in that thing? He said it was a, a extremely positive. They they allow them total autonomy. They say that, you know, you're able to. In fact, you could still go to HowStuffWorks.com, and it's not obviously in any way a Discovery site. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. And, and everything So that's I've the heard, hope is that that's what Vision 3 will experience as well, that they'll be maintained as a kind of separate unit. I yeah, don't think that's going to And I should, I should clarify I that I know so absolutely either. nothing. I'm an idiot who eats fire and sticks nails in his eyes for a living. But everything I've heard was that the experience seems to have gone well for how stuff works. And I'm certain there'll be opportunities for cross promotion. And, uh, you know, on, like on how stuff works, if you listen to. <laughs> Stuff you should know. Well, what they've done, though, the web technology that they're using <laughs> is very high quality. Yeah, so the security is incredible. I incredible. Like yeah, you, you can't, can't You try to you go want. there, and they say no because you, we don't like. I don't know what that well, I was. I guess Discovery TLC is its own, or uh, Discovery is its own operation. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Discovery it's Communication. A, it TLC, owns, though, the History Channel. Planet. It owns the Learning Channel. It owns... Uh, Animal Planet owns all these channels. And you learn nothing on any of these learning channels, by the way. Well, no. TLC, like, officially dropped learning from their name. Not just it's TLC. Not just TLC. Well, what's Tender the, Loving what's Care. the number one show on the History Channel? Pawn Stars. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, and that's that's what, uh, that's the weird part is think about how many brands their number one show is completely outside of their brand. Number one show for a long time on National Geographic was the Dog Whisperer. Right. It's like that. Bravo. It's uh, desperate New Jersey uh, people. Think about uh, A&E. It was, it was something. Mike I believe Carl, that's the name of it. Right? No, that is the show. <laughs> well, Housewives here's the interesting thing. Housewives of New Jersey. The Desperate Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> They're yeah, desperate. that's it. There's Go no on, desperate. Leo. Is there any other that's They're ABC. not desperate. Okay. The ABC is desperate. They're desperate. <laughs> real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah, not desperate are. because they're not. They're real. The fake ones are on the other network. The fake ones are the other. So um, I read the interview with the Discovery executive who said, you know, we, we spend $500,000 to $750,000 an hour to make programming, so we're very excited to acquire a company that does it for a tenth the cost. And I thought, really? They spend $75,000 an hour for programming on, on Revision 3? Uh, oh, not not even that much. No, I mean, maybe, maybe for, for like a hundredth of that amount. I mean, I don't know. That's what I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, look, look, I'll make programming for you for so $2 who got and a rich? taco. Who got rich? Uh, Who made? They said thirty million dollars for Revision Three, which is kind of. Do you think that's mind-boggling, John? You did you ever do a show on Revision Three? No, no. I think it's. Uh, I I thought the number was lower. You but thought I, it was low. Well, no. Somebody said it was twenty when I first. They heard originally said twenty to now forty, 30. and the New York Times has said thirty. So I think thirty is the number. Well, I think they only had about thirty. I think they had about thirty put in. So I don't know if anyone's going to. They get had anything. ten put in. Total? Because mm -hmm. I heard they had second some other rounds that came in. They did in. have two rounds, and I think 10 was total. Well, I know the first round, my understanding, was eight. Right. So the second one have to be at least Maybe. eight. You know, uh, okay, you want to talk gossip. The gossip I heard was that they couldn't get a second round, so that the original funder, Greylock, said, all right, all right, we're going to keep, because you needed, they, at this point, they were desperate for cash. Right. Greylock said, all right, we'll give you a few more million, but that's going to be it. And at that point, uh, I think Revision 3 did a good thing. They pivoted a little bit. They became kind of an ad agency for, for the most part, an ad, not so much a, creative, a content creator uh, with Scam School, but more an ad agency for YouTube stars like Phil DeFranco and Epic Meal Time. Well, and, and I think that was an extremely important thing for them to do transition. at that time. Yeah, to, it's a big you know, transition. To keep everything going alive. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I know for a while, Scam School was like the last uh, for a long while of stuff that was produced in-house. But, but they do App Judgment. They do Scam School. They do Techzilla. 
Well, and I'll tell you, this is what's really exciting to me is I've been developing, you know, after we pitched Scam School and it didn't go anywhere, I came up with four or five ideas of stuff that I could thought could be the next Brian Brushwood television property. Uh, and uh, television is such a messed up business. Not I mean, you know, it. yeah. it's like it's you, you'll get 90 percent of the way there and somebody will have a bad Tuesday and decide exactly. to justify their position. Which is why I no longer have conversations with mainstream media, because that's happened to me too many times. We get almost there and then they go. Yeah, never mind. Well, and you, you find these bizarre moments where you have an idea that you think is really good and a fit for America, and they'll say, yeah, can you figure out a way to spend 10 times as much on it? Because we need big. Television's got to be big. Right. And so many of these ideas, Isn't what I'm hoping funny? I could do. How can you spend more money on this show? Yeah, no, absolutely, because they want they want that bigger than life right. spectacle. They want right? it to be glossy. So what I'm, what I'm mostly excited and, that's about. That's because you're a magician. And, and that's what they do with magic. Sure. Sure, yeah, I mean, yeah. they don't do, if it's Desperate Housewives of Virginia, they're not going to do, how can we spend more money? Oh, no, yeah, they do, because they're just like, what celebrities can you involve? Uh, yeah, you're what, right. you know, what you're right. crossovers can we do? But uh, the main thing that changes for me is the number of opportunities. A lot of projects that I previously would have thought to pitch outside of Revision 3, suddenly, with them having a rich uncle, Stay it becomes in. way more important for me to right. pitch them internally. Right. Which again, that's good for a revision. Well, three, if they only got uh, thirty, that was only be a double. Well, let's say it, maybe a tripler for all that those years. I don't know if that was what they wanted. I got more gossip. I'll give you more gossip. Okay. And uh, just I'm just throwing this out. Picked it up in Norway. And Norway, gossip. it was the talk of the fjords. Norwegians won't shut up. Uh, boy, that's the truth. Uh, they're actually very taciturn. That's the end of the Norwegian market. No, they're very taciturn. They're <laughs> taciturn. And most of the, the Nordics. They're are. like Germans with a sense of humor. The gossip? <laughs> Thank you, John. John's always protecting me. Uh, is that it wasn't a big payout for the founders, but it was a fairly successful payout for existing managers, which tells me that, re that the reason Discovery was interested in Revision 3 is they liked the management team and they want to make sure that they were stay in place. This is always the issue when you acquire a company is that talent Everyone will leave. bails, yeah. So what they uh, will do, and I think they did in this case, is make contracts with the people, the key people, and those were fairly lucrative. But so, I was uh, told so by... Uh, let's find out. What, what Brushwood, what did you get for your contract to, to be kept I'm around? I'm not an employee of Revision 3, yeah. so, so I got I got. Exactly not sure somebody my... guaranteed you'd stick around did, for working did, for did nothing. They, Let me ask you, did they at any point say to you, even in the last few weeks, hey, you know, we want to make sure you kind of stick around. Are you happy? Did they do anything? I, I, I got to feel like I'm such a small piece of that pie that it wouldn't have the answer been a is smart no. thing to involve that. That's, <laughs> so, that's actually way. surprising. I would have, I would have yeah, actually. I would have, uh, you, you seem to me a key employee. I would have done the same with Patrick, Veronica, uh, certainly Prager. Uh, the yeah, but you got to realize, Brad. like, I mean, uh, I may be one of the oldest hands of the Revision 3 team, but I'm certainly not one of the most important when you compare to, like, you know, Philip DeFranco coming in with, you know, he could fart well, you on gotta camera believe, and get a million views. you got to believe Philip DeFranco, Epic, the Epic Mealtime guys. Oh, sure, sure. Those sure, guys sure. were absolutely pushed. Yeah, well, because those are established properties that would continue to do super well all on their own. Whereas, like, for me, it would be significantly difficult. I, I could stop scam school. And next week, come up with a completely different show called Con Class. Right. But but again, it's like, I don't want to do that. I love no. the Scam School brand. I love what, what we've been able to grow. But again, compared to like a Philip DeFranco, it's like, it's, I don't see how I would even factor into Revision 3's thought process. If anybody's going to disappear, it's going to be the magician. Yeah. I'd be worried. <laughs> I'd be really worried about that. After the ventriloquist, they don't have a ventriloquist. <laughs> so uh, I, I know this isn't a really a, a big news story in general, but it's a story for us because these are yeah. mostly our friends. It's Kevin Rose. It's David Prager. It's Patrick Norton. It's, it's all the people I've worked with at Tech TV. It was, you know, of the two companies that kind of came out of Tech you TV. You know, the funny one. thing was most of these guys came out of the Leo Laporte School of Broadcasting at some point or other. And so what did you get? You're going to get a finder's fee or some no. sort of a thank you, a yeah. gold pen, or maybe a watch, I'll take a or some pen. sort of a gift? You know, the interesting thing is when we started Twit, John, and you were there in episode five on, um, it was Kevin, three on, it was Kevin, it was you, Kevin, Patrick. I had approached Kevin and Patrick and said, let's do a partnership to make Twit. Kevin, shortly thereafter, went and founded Revision 3 with money that he got from Jay Adelson. He, right. That gave him the opportunity to leave G4. He was at G4 still when we started doing Twit. And he started Dignation, which was a kind of Twit-like show. Um, so he, Twit he was smart. He like actually started uh, Revision 3. And, he's, and I hope he's well, done but, well. Hold on. On the flip side, like you've never had to take outside money, right? No. You've I'm, never had, had any investors? Had to or... Or your or with your God, he's, he's, he's had to, but he's never done it. <laughs> no, I haven't. But I mean, that the point is, is by the way, that makes me less attractive. I'm sure, John, you could probably speak to this to uh, somebody like Discovery that I haven't. That it's a sole proprietorship. Wouldn't that doesn't that make me seem less serious, less well, real? Well, if they came and saw your studio, they would think otherwise. But I think what happens is they figure. Uh, 
He can't be a real uh, deal. No, I think Just there's a guy. fear that it's like they always know the head guys want walk. Right. Yeah. Well, you're so rooted in everything That's why to we're the not point that you worth can't. Anything. Well, you're probably worth something it's if the they Leo can guarantee channel. that you, that you stayed on for five years and trained two other Leos. It's one of the reasons that we bring in other people. We try to do, we're doing TNT with Tom and Sarah and I as we do lots of shows with other people because we're trying to be more than just me so that someday somebody will come along and offer me money. I would not talk to Discovery. Sorry. I don't think that I'm you're... Not uh, it's it, not what I want. I think you not like Discovery. You like doing you know, this. Like you cable. like chatting you and talking. You know, that was the irony. Doing. Jim Latterback for years said, we're going to kill cable. We're going to kill cable until they came with a checkbook. And he said, I love cable. There's nothing wrong with cable. <laughs> yeah. Cable's a good thing. Yeah. I killed in that Gee. meeting. It was amazing. Jim, Jim Latterback, huh? He did that? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk it? Yahoo's CEO, on the other hand, is not a computer science major. He has no degree. How, why does anyone do this? Why Thank would you, you lie on your resume and not, not Especially merely... Especially a CEO you're level already of, a, making of a public corporation. You're already making it. You don't have to lie. You're the CEO at Yahoo. You don't have to lie. All right, now, keep. All right, when you say resume, what is this resume that he submitted, this piece of paper? Like, from what I heard, it was like a bio written up on him that he failed to dispute or something like that. But there's what a is, history. There's a history of it. Yeah, the, the Yahoo website. Well, he website. claimed it, even. I mean, well, he claimed no, he, it. He, this was, Kara Swisher had a great article on this. He had, there was a, um, an interview with him in 2009 when he's still with PayPal. Uh, eBay, PayPal. And he was a CEO at PayPal as yeah, well. Yeah, and, and the interviewer said, well, I can, I, I know that you have a degree in both computer science and accounting. That's perfect for PayPal. And he said, well, yeah, you know, uh, as an uh, engineer. Uh, uh, that's not what he said. Well, he said he said yes to the, what the, she said. No, the question All right, here it is. Was, Moira, Gunn, was, Moira Gunn on Tech Nation. Your old buddy, Moira Gunn. My old buddy, Moira. Yeah. Asked him about his college degrees, noting that they were in accounting and computer science. He said, quote. And then the question was. He said, what are the most important things you learned, said Moira. Yeah, so, says Thompson, failing to correct her. See, but again, he, but, but look, I, you guys know, you do interviews. What kind of douchebag would you be for somebody to ask you that question? And rather than answer the question, well, it's, Moira, it's actually, say, well, technically, I went to Stonehill I've College. Done that. I've done it a number of times. I have a really a bunch of really old bios floating around. And somebody will introduce me at some some conference or something right at the beginning with this long-winded introduction. They'll say I did something, and I will correct the record before I give my speech. I, he also I said— I always do that. Because do you, you, but you also in correct response, the grammar of other people introducing well, beside you. the point. <laughs> he also said in response, and that's really the background that I have, and it started back in my college days, and I think that's really the wonderful part of being an engineer— is that you think this yeah. way? Yeah, oh, this is this, here's, but here's here's why it matters. I would wait, agree, wait, wait, would, wait, hold on a second, Mike. What <clears throat> bullshit are you trying to cover up here with this argument? <laughs> Look, what you, is you your protest, degree, test, sir? Do you, you really go to Scam School? Too much. Right. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> is Scam School it. an accredited, accredited university? <laughs> where is Scam School? I mean, maybe this is you know I come from showbiz where everything is everything's like, bullshit. Sell, yeah, exactly, totally. Yeah. And so and so at some point it's like you're not going to ruin someone else's show to correct every little thing. And plus, it's like look for example. Uh, let's. There was no computer science degree program available at his university. Right. But he has a narrative that is authentic. That he's, you know, he took computer science classes there. Right. And so, and so, if 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 the story other people are reporting, because here's the problem: you cannot get in the business of going around correcting the media on all the things they get wrong about you. The media sucks balls at getting things right. It was the There's Yahoo not website? Been a single article, even interviews with me, where they where they even quoted me correctly in right. all this. And if I made a job of going around saying, "Oh no, it wasn't a nail in my ear; it was a nail was, in my eye." Yeah, but if it was a nail in your eye or ear or whatever that was not supposed to be on your own website with arrows pointing for, to it, I think you would be. A year. Now, was it his website, from, or was it like Yahoo. he physically made it by himself, or somebody else made it and he didn't get it was around? Like the, the Yahoo, uh, just corporate, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't some, the somebody thing? buy on the, the corporate site. Is, the point is, all of this. The, the yeah. only one thing matters: can he do the job or can't? No, that's not no, what no, matters. No, that's no. not what matters. Here's no, why. Here's no. why he Wrong. should be fired. All right, all right, all right. The reason he should be fired is if a low-level person at Yahoo did this, he would be fired. True. And so we can either say, well, we have a double standard for millionaire CEOs; they get to get away with stuff the rest of us don't. But if any of us had real work instead of being journalists and media people, if we had real jobs and we worked at companies and we our resume said we had a degree we didn't have, we would be fired. So if, if Yahoo wants to have a policy where if we catch you fudging your resume, you won't be fired, then I'm, I think that he also should be part of that policy. But I don't like the double standard. I would hate to break it to you, but there exists a double standard between millionaire CEOs and, and low-level employees. But we shouldn't agree with it. But, but again, this guy did not write up a piece of paper 
with lies he wrote about himself. This is something that happened well, we don't around. Know that. Into, okay, well, no, you're right. That, that's a good point. If he did, then certainly. If he intentionally lied, then that is definitely a problem. But this mm. this massive focus on on uh, on a bio that was written about him that he failed to correct in this quote out of context from an interview. From it's not years a ago. minor aspect of the bio. It's not like he you know had, was born on April sixth and it says April fifth. All right. Well, well, how about this? Like, it's like I've got a degree in computer science and I'm in a computer but company. Is that, does that matter to if the CEO has a degree in computer? science? No, not at no. all. In fact, most CEOs don't have degrees in computer right. sciences. They're usually in so management not, or something else. It doesn't speak to his ability to do the job. It speaks merely to his honesty. And then the yeah. question okay. becomes. Well, how much did he know, or was this somebody else writing the bio and he didn't notice it? Or no did he say, crap. hey, I know they didn't have it. You know, somebody might write of me, say, that he graduated from Yale. That's not true. I dropped out. Um, but I might not make a big deal about it, as you point out, if somebody says, actually, I would. But, uh, but I, Boy, you would if you were being hired and that was in the bio. But I might bio, not notice if it was in a bio that yeah, I didn't write. Yeah, but this write. is going on for a while. I, here's what I have. Here's the real problem I have with this sort of thing. Because I've known a bunch of people that I would just call pathological liars. And they may start when they make up anything. I you always have to assume maybe a lot of it is bull crap, and you know maybe a lot of their skills are bull crap. When you start seeing bull crap, you have to. I mean, maybe once in a while it's a one shot bull crap. The guy was accidentally full of it, but generally speaking, when a guy is full of it at any level, he is full of it on a lot of levels. And I get real skeptical when I run into one of these guys because they try to trick you into believing stuff that's not true. It speaks to his integrity. Yes. Yep. Hmm. I don't know. It's I, I don't know enough about this specific situation. Yeah. And certainly if someone's a pathological liar, I'm not going to defend that practice. But I do know, like I look at my own life, like I'll tell somebody that I went to University of Texas at Austin where I studied the Plan 2 Honors Program in history. And mm -hmm. the fact is I had enough history credits that if I was one... Planet 2? Uh, plan, it's, it's a special honors programs at UT where it's like they only take 150 students each year. And you go to a planet? Plan 2. Oh, I'm plan sorry. Plan 2. It's its own. It's its own liberal arts major, right? And so you didn't finish after. No, I did, but but after I'm I graduated, sure I discovered that if I had taken just one more history class, I would have had a double major. But I didn't. What but, was your major? What so did you your major in? Plan two. Uh, plan two is the name of the major. Believe it right, or not. Anyway, which is uh, anyway. The, the the point is, be part if of somebody agenda misreported, <laughs> if somebody misreported or misinterpreted my statement to mean that I said that I had two degrees, you would correct them. Well, it depends on the situation. You wouldn't in really the middle of a In the middle of an interview, I probably would But if it was in your official bio. So well, yeah. I mean, I, I would... I would. It's amazing to me how times an amorphous statement, like I studied blank and blank, could be interpreted. Right. It immediately gets so switched So this into. is all really about you oh, and yeah. your concern about not having any real degree, but, but this just bogus it. plan two thing from some, right. some <laughs> yeah. correspondence how, how did you ever school get a job as a fire know. breather? I know. So, by the way, what is Agenda 21? Agenda 21 is this, you should go to the UN site and, and download, don't download it, never mind, because it's like 700 pages of, of a, a entire scheme to take over the governments of all the world to, uh, to create a better planet. It's basically a one world government scheme that has very specific things that everybody has to do who signs on to this. Including getting a degree. And the university, I'm the university, I'm sorry, the uh, United States it's of America. It's about environment. It's, oh, yeah, sure. It's about the Start earth. Start reading it. It's to protect the earth. Yeah, that's what they, that's the cover. To resolve widening inequalities in income. There you go. There's another one. To solve the... So in other words, we're supposed to give our money to poor African countries. It's all really aimed at, at soak in the U.S. It says it's about sustainable development. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. All right, we're going to move. By the way, Scott Thompson's response to this is the tech world is out for blood. You should just focus on your job and pay less blood? attention. We don't even know the guy. You, one thing we can That's agree on. That's what I'd on. like to ask you guys. Why are you out for blood when we're you not. don't even know this guy? <laughs> we're not out for one blood. One thing you can agree on. Just one more reason that Yahoo is just going straight down the tubes. Dude, anything wrong. Yahoo's it's so, good. you got to feel for them. This is, these, this is the comedy of errors. Uh, the guy, I don't know. He he doesn't even look. He looks kind of shifty. <laughs> I think oh, he see, this is. Oh, I think he does television. too. What can I? I'm, I'm going to agree with Leo. <laughs> I think I think I saw him in a post office once. All right, yeah, we're he's buying stamps. Go up. Obviously. Actually, if he was using Stamps.com, he would have never had Great to buy There stamps. you have it. Unfortunately, they're not an advertiser. Oh, no. They will be going forward. But I. <laughs> so just remember, Stamps.com. Uh, actually, I want to talk about <laughs> Squarespace.com quickly. And then we're going to get to the Galaxy S3. Squarespace.
I want to know, this? did I make a horrible, horrible mistake by not covering the live announcement of yet another Android phone? Some people think I did. We'll talk about it. Uh, but first, Squarespace.com, everything you need to build an amazing website. It's hosting. I got to say this. I think people don't understand when I talk about it. They think, oh, this is blogging software. Oh, no, so much more. It is web hosting, the best web hosting you can get, plus, on top of it, really great software for any kind of website, whether it's a, a photo gallery, uh, e-commerce, a blog. Yeah, it'll do a blog. Uh, you've got to check it out. Now, the nice thing about Squarespace is they are so confident that uh, you will love them that they actually just say, come on, try it. You don't need to give us a credit card I or dare anything. you. Yeah, it's almost a, like... It's like a street fight. Try it. It's like, come on, bring First it. one's free. Suck. <laughs> Come on, bring it. Uh, uh, try it. Or it's like when they, when in the karate movies, they go <laughs> with your hand. You know, they go, come here, come on. Uh, everything you need to create an amazing website. Click the try it free button. No credit card needed. Uh, all you need is uh, a, a mouse to click the button. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it with your finger if you're on the iPad. Uh, you get everything. You get the domains. You get the hosting. You get analytics. You get 24-7 support. They even, they're so committed to having your site look great and work great that they have, let me go to workshops. I think it's workshops.squarespace.com. Oh, this is the stuff where they teach you all the they advanced They have free stuff. webinars, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, um, a really great way to uh, get started. They're, they're free for everybody at all levels of experience. So if you're like a CSS wizard, you can... Take a workshop there. They have, by the way, a CSS pop-out editor that's incredible with color coding, a code. That's everything. what they did for uh, for my website when we, we brought them on uh, sponsors for Scam School. It was uh, they redid my schwood.com website. Yeah. S H W O O D. Total CSS. Like this is stuff that is way over my head. But even though I'm an idiot and don't know anything, this is the new site. Yeah, what, what, the, the, we, it's been up for 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 a couple of years now. But it's like, look at that. It's everything super simple. It's nice. And if you scroll down, it's got it's Twitter clean. widgets in there, yeah. so I'm able to update it from the road. Yeah. There you go. I think it Do even you mentions. use the uh, iPhone or the uh, or the oh, iPad dude. app? I, I use the iPhone app not only for updates but to get rid of spam because I I never think to log in and clear out the spam out of the comments. Right. But I do think. Because it's so easy, just on the phone while you're sitting at the airport or whatever, clear out all the fake comments on there. They have something new that is really cool. Uh, then it's just during the month of May, but they're going to... So a lot of times people, you had like schwood.com. Mm -hmm. And now it's kind of complicated to make schwood.com be Squarespace. So what I notice when I go... And you, you got to take advantage of this. Because when you go to schwood.com, you get schwood.squarespace.com. Right. That's, you know, there's a better way. See, I'm the old school because I like originally I'm like, well, it'll promote Squarespace, whatever. They were nice enough that to help me nice out with the website. You. Yeah, but, oh, okay. but, but tell you me about this other this. thing. What can I do? So now that you could, uh, this month only, when you use this, I'll tell you how to do it, use a special code. Squarespace is offering free domain registration when you sign up for an annual plan that's integrated with the sign up process. So as you sign up, you say, I want schwood.com. They'll do all the wires in the background. You get the, you get a hassle free setup. You get a free domain. It's about 15 bucks worth of it. And they, and, and it's all done for you. So it's really great if you say, you know, I want to have fancypants.com or whatever. It's all done for you. This is, they have made it very, very easy to create a new website. If, even if it's your first, and if it's not your first, you're going to see why so many people love Squarespace. And the pricing now, simplified and a lot lower, $8 a month for the standard plan. If you want unlimited, I don't know anybody who does this. <laughs> unlimited pages, unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage. Wait. No, you can't have unlimited storage for $16. $16 a month. Is that for reals? Yeah. All right. That's if you buy the annual. Feels like there's uh, You get four there. audiences, which is nice. So you unlimited can have password. storage? Yeah. So I could use this instead of one of those. Uh, uh, Actually, that's an interesting idea. Sure. Yeah, use yeah. just to store all your uh, files. Google Drive. It'd like be great for a, a podcast, box. unlimited bandwidth. You, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And they never go down because they have a very sophisticated. Yeah, we uh, tested it we, recently. You can't break it. Seems so. Were you able to break it? No. With your vast no agenda audience, the, all fifty of them, they were pounding it. <laughs> they were pounding the site, and it was this thing was just sticking. Anyway, try it free for fourteen days, and if you decide you want to sign up, ten percent off your first purchase. That's why you want to do the one year purchase and the free registration. Uh, but the offer code is Twit five five for the month of May. Twit and the number five when you sign up. Um, I'm just thinking you're going to love this. The secret behind. Some of the best websites in the world, squarespace.com. Um, Galaxy S3, are we excited? Sure I am, Leo. No, you're not. They're you're getting lying. bigger and bigger. 
It's 4.8 inches, which is getting to the size of the clunker you carry. You have it? Where is it? It's in the other room. Wait, so are you 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 bringing the note? Here's here's the problem with it. Here's what I mean. This note thing is getting on my nerves. Would you get get my, uh, is John here or somebody? Would you get my note? I just wrote a column in Market Market Watch about this. I got untethered. There's obviously some sort of a weird trend going on. It's bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know, it's funny. For a while, the idea was you'd have a bigger watch but a smaller cell phone yeah right right or remember that, that real little cool. bitty star tech the one they brought the dinky one was yeah. like this big remember david borman who the big fat guy and he had this little yeah, sony so who talked to him like this extremely small it so phones, stupid. and it was like Ooh, by the way david's lost weight he looks good and the phone still looks stupid what, what, what it's right all back, what it's all about that. i think uh, the, the big screens is it's so. yet it's one of the many ways in which companies uh, android uh handset ma- makers are trying to not be apple iphones mm-hmm. they're trying to get out of the way of the iphone so a they don't have you know a, um patent headaches in the courts right and they're also trying to just differentiate because i mean there's there's a certain number of people like leo who want the gigantic screen the majority probably want an iphone size screen or you know a smaller screen but you know they're, they're trying to be not iphones there was a uh, article on android police uh calling the galaxy s3 the first smartphone designed entirely by lawyers yeah, that's actually it, a good article it, yeah it is actually it breaks yeah. it down showing how all the design and choices this is, are and by the way i'd like to know why type fonts cannot typefaces cannot be copyrighted uh, they or, or patented of course they can't no they can't only the names oh, they really? cannot be copyrighted or patented fashion if, if when Cordy, when you go to see uh, one of the big fashion designer shows in Milan or wherever, those designs cannot be patented or copyrighted. So, you could do a so knock why off? is Apple getting away with getting this patented when it's obviously a design and designs cannot be patented or copyrighted? It's trade dress, and I'll tell you why. Because of confusion in the marketplace. People, <sighs> Apple's contention is that Samsung intentionally made it look like an iPhone so that when you got to the phone store, that's what the fashion people do with their knockoffs. Right. They make it intentionally look like the exact well, and same it's like, thing. And, it, and that's what when you run into a typeface like Helv instead of Helvetica. <laughs> and Helv, by the way, was used by HP in, in, in their original uh, uh, laser printer. They had the little cartridge. Remember that? Right. And Helv was in there. It was a complete ripoff of Helvetica, but it was called Helv. Or Geneva. Time's another one. Okay, Time's now, now brand new so I don't it's, have the I'm, note. Uh, it's hard to tell because it's in the new Papillon case. But, <laughs> but I think, no, I brought my dog instead of, I couldn't find my phone. That big clunker you couldn't what find? That's say. <laughs> I lost it. In fact, well, I'm surprised the phone doesn't bark at you like the dog. So, so tell so me, which, is, which side of this are you on, John, that, that you feel like we need well, here, legal no, here, protection for fashion or that we need? No, I, I think we need no legal protection exactly, for any of those things, I'm including at, the phone design. Now, if you Here, call the phone and Ozzy rings, he ate it. <laughs> okay, he's got a million of them. <laughs> so, uh, so here's the so here's I'm, so I'm doing the No Agenda show with Curry. Yeah, and he says, I, I you know I'm gonna get it. I, I love this Android, but I'm getting a new phone. Get the note. And he says, I'm getting a note. He's gonna love it. And so, I said, What you're getting you. a note? Leo has a it's note. It's a phablet. And then he says, Well, that's interesting because I think this is the way to go. It is. It's you know and it's so, selling like hotcakes. And so then, two nights ago at dinner, my son's here. He says, you know, I, I'm getting rid of my... Th- He's getting a note. Yes! Bingo. I said, you got to be crazy. No, Leo's got one. Every, and Adam wants one. What is with it. this note thing? It's actually no, wait, well, a what's, huge what's success. It? It's a huge success. And I'm surprised because I... You know what? I thought, uh, this is nuts. Nobody's going to want this. I like it. But nobody's going to really want this. Because it it's just so big. It's 5.3 inches. It's, 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 it's this big. Did, didn't, they, didn't they call that uh, tablet when it was the Dell Streak was like the same size? It's a little smaller than the Streak, but it's you're right. It's almost a tablet. And that's what uh, no, the, it's Samsung's pitch on this is it's a compromise between a tablet and a phone. But it's small enough because they make them so thin. It's small enough. To, it still slides in your pocket. But that's what's interesting is now this. There it is. That, 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 is makes, it look, that makes it look bigger than it is. It is big. It's not that big. They got a person with small hands. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. It's not, <laughs> it's not that big. Yeah, yeah, now, but... it's interesting because that has the S pen. Yeah. And doesn't the new Galaxy S3 have a pen? It's called the P pen? No, the C pen. C pen. C pen. I don't know why it's got a Well, I think letter. you stumbled onto our actual device. trend. So I wrote a column in this last Friday's Market Watch describing the trend. Yeah. Uh, with this, my same shocked, I'm shocked and dismayed. But I am now uh, subscribing to what you stumbled onto, which is a bigger is better. That that size, and I think it's maybe a magical it's size, a sweet spot. Yeah, it's a sweet spot size, and yep. I think they're they're you know they're they're, they're 
I, my idea in the column was that Samsung, above, above all the other companies, doing more experimentation with size and shape. And, and so they went from 4.3 to 4.8. Right. They got a 5.3. They're testing, testing, testing. And then they're going to finally say, look. And Apple's going to be behind the eight they, ball. They didn't go anywhere. Uh, they, they simultaneously have all shapes. If you've ever looked at all of That's Samsung's right. phones, they, they even it's have amazing. the Samsung yeah, Player. They, they're really experimental. Which is a phone. Galaxy S2 kind of device that has no phone. It's an yeah. iPod Touch. Yeah. So I think that they... We gain from that, don't we? Because yeah, we get to see what people really like you instead of stuff. you're gonna like this. Right. I'm Apple. You <laughs> must did, buy did you, this one phone. Did you talk about this article in the Android Police? This, yes, I brought I brought it up. Uh, just that's how we out. got into that conversation. Right, yeah, I talking about that. how the design clearly screams like, look, very much not Apple. It's ugly. Please don't yeah. sue us. It's not. A, it's not ugly. Everything's yeah, ugly. I agree. Until you I, I don't think it. it's ugly. It's just it's, it's not beautiful. <laughs> it, it looks very generic. It's inspiring. To me. I feel I mean, it's functional. lighter for having seen it. This is this is this is the funny thing is that Apple said, "Well, you can make a phone or a tablet as long as it's not anything like our stuff, which means it doesn't have rounded corners." So, okay, we're gonna have to make it square corners. It can't be uh, the aspect ratio of a phone, so you have to make it <laughs> kind of like wide or short. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I want to see an uneven phone. You can't have yeah, like black a the, right. the Samsung trapezoid yeah. versus yeah. wide at the Tri top. What was Triangle. it? The Dunder Mifflin Triangle. Right, the triangular triangular there you go. Tablet. Dunder Mifflin. Um, you can't have a display of colorful square icons in a grid with rounded corners. Have you already talked about, and I could totally see the phone getting so big that you increasingly rarely pull it out of your pocket and instead start to re rely on... Well, that's on kind of the way it is, right? ...ancillary you, devices like mm -hmm. the Pebble. I think the Pebble is going to be, you know, phenomenal when you get one. I ordered one of those. That's the that's the watch The watch is the most Android. successful Kickstarter yeah. in history was 8 million plus. And I think Apple's going to come out with a watch. You think well. so? Yeah, within the next year or two. Absolutely. Really? Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be using my Pebble. But then, but did then you order, did you get on the, get uh, it on the yeah, Pebble? Yeah, well, I, I haven't yet, mainly because uh, it's like it's clear it's going to get made, so I'm just going to wait until 8. more cars are available. $8.7 million. Dollars. They wanted to make, they wanted to raise $100,000, and they haven't even come to the end. They raised over, I think, $5 million in a week. So let me ask you this. This has been a phenomenal, <clears throat> there's a phenomenal euphoria for Kickstarter projects right now. And I, I think, think on balance it's good. We've seen some amazing success stories, Double right. Fine Productions raising $2 million right, when they just a wanted game. a quarter million, yeah. right? Uh, you know, the guy who created Wasteland wants to make Wasteland 2, and that's been super funded. And, uh, but the question is, what we haven't seen is any of the backlash when after these products come out, and they're not what we hoped they would be. Yeah. That's going to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Exactly. So, but but the weird thing is, there's going to be a strong lag time. You still have like six months to promise the moon to everyone and right. collect a bunch of Kickstarter money. And I wonder how they're going to enforce accountability on this kind of thing, or if you'll have a reputation, or or if there's some kind of commenting dig style up and down vote. Well, isn't this what the Jobs Bill also accomplished? The Jobs Bill changed the threshold for buying into stuff. Right now, uh, you're not investing in this company. You're just saying, I'm going to give you some money to buy the product. Have, right. get but it feels like you're investing. It's kind of like a cheap way you're to getting, be... Uh, well, get ready. ready. Yeah. Because the jobs bill, uh, which is now the law, I don't know when it goes into effect, allows you to go to people and say, hey, Mike, you want to invest in my company? In the past, you had to have a certain... There was a means test. You had to have a certain oh, amount you're talking of money. About, yeah, yeah. Uh, not anymore. You can do this. They've completely eliminated those restrictions. And I have a feeling that the next Kickstarter is not going to be, hey, you know, get a T-shirt or get the investment. watch. It's going to be get a oh, stock. It's going to be like to micro, company, yeah. micro, micro loans, but on the other way. I'd kind of like to do investment. that with yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. Leo Laporte now offering shares It's in legal. Twits. You could sell bricks. No, no, no but no, see, the bricks, no, all no, you bricks, got was a brick. You didn't, get, you, didn't get any, uh, you didn't get any investment. Yeah, you want to do this. Do you think I should? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd hate to, to suggest it, but there's going to be a lot of graft. There's going to well, be that's the thing. A I mean, lot of he wants to get in on it. Essentially, this eliminates. <laughs> that's exactly, exactly right. This eliminates exactly what was right. it intended as, a, as protection for consumers. But you know, you know uh, what I love about Kickstarter as an look idea, at this picture. So, what do you think of these uh, watches? <laughs> the Starks are great. The Philippe Stark. They're exactly the same. Exactly I know. The same. I know. So look at these guys. You know who that is? Who? The CEO and founder of Groupon. And they're laughing about <laughs> how much money they've made. And you know what? Their stock is now in the single digit. It's yeah. plummeted. Yeah, yeah, it's 50 cents then.
Yeah, well, it might be. You'll be give sorry. It, give so it time. I, I, and this is one of those uh, tough free market questions that we always end up bringing up when I seem to be here. But, uh, but, but it's one of those things where just as the efficiency of digital distribution has made available what uh, uh, was it, Michael Robertson, MP3.com, is that the guy? Uh, he called yes. the middle class rock star. Now we now have the middle class benefactor, the middle class investor, the middle class what, venture. What, so when did they ever benefit? Well, that's the issue. The whole thing with the middle class and all these the, the citizen investors, they, they, they get reeled in like suckers, and then they're, they're hauled ashore, and then they're broke. I mean, the whole scam is to, br is to bring the public into these deals, which is what Obama's inviting here with but this But you deal. have been anti-Sarbanes-Oxley all along. One of the effects of this is to overturn some of the features of Sarbanes. -Oxley. Absolutely. That the whole thing's a disaster. You should be happy I about think the that. Public, now, now, on the, uh, Many of these compliance requirements started with SOX. Now, on the other hand... On the other hand... I would... I'll, I'll just get a little bit on the other side of the argument, which is once in a while, you might get lucky right. as, a, as, a, as an idiot investor and pick some winner and then rock it out. I mean, you could have bought Microsoft at 16 bucks and when it first came out. And it and it doubled and doubled and and split and doubled and split and doubled and split. You would have made for your for every say if you put a thousand in, you would have come out of there with nearly a millionaire. Now right. here's, well, here's and, the and keep in mind, like when I'm saying middle class benefactor, these are largely artistic ven ventures on Kickstarter to where like uh, you are going to give fifty dollars to somebody who wants to create his first comic book ever. Like our friend Brett Rounceville, his mm -hmm. life dream was right. to write the provider a comic book, and it's like everybody felt great about making his artistic dream come true, and nobody cared about whether or not it was an investment or you're going to make money right. back or anything like that. Uh, but when this kind of thing comes to pass, and you do have people playing the market of, of Kickstarter for very different reasons, I think you are going to run into some very ugly consequences. Well, that's what, you know, oh, the yeah, AARP was doomed. against, the AARP was against the jobs bill because they they were worried that older people would be duped by, you know, solicitors who would call and say, mm -hmm. I have an investment for you. People are easily you. duped, apparently. Steve Case, the guy who was promoting this, the founder of AOL, said, well, look, we don't protect gamblers against casinos either. What, what about people buy lottery tickets? Incredibly poor people spend fortunes Mostly incredibly, on lottery yeah. tickets, and it's a total scam. And not right. only is the it's government not protecting scam. them, they're the ones they're running doing it. The, they're perfect. They're running the lotteries. So why not let people invest in companies rather than so just So if the government's money? ripping everybody off and, and everybody's ripping, might as well let everyone rip exactly. everyone off of the hell with I it. I want to take a little country. break. I want to take a little break. But when we come back, I do want to talk about something that seems to be going on with, with the Groupon, mm -hmm. which really clearly now, as the stock price continues to tumble, was a bubble event. Yes? Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh, Facebook Ooh. IPO is coming up. Mm -hmm. We're talking about OMG Pop. Zynga bought talk it about for a bubble. $200 million dollars on the day it was the, it, at, at as close to the peak as you could yeah. get. It's yes. lost 5 million, 5 million users in the last 30 days. Yeah. Zynga completely screwed by this. So let's our our topic next: irrational exuberance. Are we in another bubble? We will continue. John God, C. Dvorak so. is here from ChannelDvorak.com. So. He likes the short stocks. The, 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 <laughs> he's a grumpy stock shorter. Scam school. Brian Schwood.com is not here. Too late for me to set up my own grift. Mr. Please Libertarian. Let it be a bubble. <laughs> he says no regulation. I want to be able to rip off anybody I so choose. That's what the whole point of scam school is, frankly. Yeah. This guy's got a show about it. We're looking yeah, you know, for book, a beer back to con. How to win bar bets. Yeah. Yeah. Which is basically go. taking drunks for whatever's in their pocket. Yeah, but then you, like, give them a hug afterwards. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, Mike Elgin. So do the courts. Who has nothing to sell. Nothing to sell. No hugs for anyone. <laughs> you know what I'm excited about? And I wish I had one, and I'm kind of sad that I don't. I thought I was going to be on this list. The Ford Focus Electric is here. Hmm. You're not you on know, the list? I, I was trying to get on the list again. I was trying to do. Scott Monty said, well, we have a friends and family list. No, I'll you were going to buy one. Well, I, I was going to I just want to borrow it. one. I was, oh, oh, I, I didn't ask I just want to test one. one. I've tested all these electric cars, and I can't seem to get this one. Okay, get ready. Okay, so they've got two. They've got the 2012 Ford Focus Electric, and then soon the Ford Fusion Energy, which is a plug-in hybrid. I actually kind of like the plug-in hybrid idea. Yes, better. because you can get that white sticker. And go no. across the bridges free. You can get that with an electric, can't you? Yes, that's what I said. No, but I like the plug-in hybrid because you've got a gas engine in yes, it. Yes, I know, but you still get the sticker. It has you a plug. You get the sticker. If it's got a plug. You, you plug get the it in. You power it. But then if you need to go farther than the limit of the yeah, battery. It's better. It's a, it's a, it seems to be more practical. Anyway, both are available for, for bopping around town. I mean, the Ford Focus Electric. I don't know what the range is, actually. I wonder if they say that. Yeah, it's probably the same as all of them. You want the motor. 100% electric. Uh, range of get ready. Oh wow, 
Get seven, ready. 76 miles. All electric? All electric. That's better than any electric I, I know would of. like to see a mileage. I would. I want to see one with my, with a range of 500 miles. Yeah, so would I. I'm in. You know how many batteries? You'd have to have a pickup truck no, behind I you carrying the new batteries. new technology. Yeah, we need new battery technology. Yeah, well, that's not happening. 76 miles. It also has the best in class 240 volt charge time. You got to get that 240 volt charger in the garage, and that's easy. And then it's fastest to charge. The most fuel efficient five passenger vehicle in America. They are using the state of the art in the batteries. I mean, that's how they're getting 76 miles per gallon. I mean, uh, driving range. They claim, and I don't know why they say this, 110 miles per gallon. But that's it's called. Not, it's this new thing, MPGE. I have. Uh, d I've done this calculation. Because I test drove a couple of these cars. How do you do that? I mean, isn't you it infinite? base it? No, you base it on the amount of money you spend ah. per mile, and then you it's extrapolate the amount of gasoline that. Will, how much gasoline could you buy for that? That's five what the bucks? E means in MPGE. It's equivalent. Th that's new that they put that on there, but yeah. it's a calculation based on expense. Mm. That makes sense. So 110 miles per gallon equivalent. That's actually pretty cool. That's what they pretty much all are. No, most of them I've seen 100, 110. Okay, well, 110. 76 miles. That's a better range. Most of these guys are 40 miles, 50 miles, 76 miles. I can get to San Francisco and back. That's all I care about. Well, it depends how many bars you stop at. <laughs> uh, it is available for purchase now at EV certified dealers. The 2013 Ford Fusion Energy Plug-in Hybrid is coming in 2013. It will have 100 MP, over 100 MPGE. Here's another thing people should think about. So I go into the Air Oakland airport to take a flight out. And I'm walking out of the lot. I know what you're going to say. The so plug's right there. Crap, there's a bunch of plugs for electric you cars get the right best at the best spot. Front row parking. Yeah. And by the way, so and it's, it's always vacant. Well, no, there was one car parked was in a car. some wow. douchebag that wasn't electric parked in one of oh, the other allowed. spots. No, no, you got to have a plug. They uh, that is the best thing, and I and there's never anybody in that electric car slot yet. Yet. So well, there for will a while, be now. it will be a good time to so have an quick. electric car. Uh, I love how they've done the driver information systems, both onboard and off. You can manage the recharging process on your phone. Yeah. Um, determine the most eco-friendly driving route. That's new. So you've always had fastest, Eco shortest. Eco-friendly. Now the least energy use. Uh. Remotely control vehicle charge and preconditioning settings. Minor control mon vehicles. Monitor battery state of charge. Maximize energy efficient. Of course, sync the and the MyFord Touch will be... Uh, um, especially adapted for electrified driving with fuel level, battery power level, average and instantaneous miles per gallon. Regenerative braking, of course we know about that. That captures about 90% of the energy lost in braking. There she is. That's that's who, her. Who is that? I don't know. The system's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that sometime. I'm like, hey, there he is. There she is. Who? That guy. That's the woman. <laughs> um... Let's see. What else? Oh, you can actually monitor the uh, regeneration and maximize your range with the My Ford Touch EV features. This is all cool. This is the website, Ford.com slash technology. And there's also this value charging feature that's in the Ford Sync. It's actually, Mark Microsoft came up with this, where it lets you set, uh, depending on your utility, off-peak hours for charging. So it doesn't charge. Yeah. You plug it in. Until 3 o'clock in the morning. But then it charges when it's cheapest. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Just, I just think this is so... I'm so excited. You're going to get one? Yeah, as soon as they let what me. What are you going to do with your Mustang? Would you like it? I'd love to have that. Mustang's a nice car. I know. It's got Getting a gasoline line. V8. It's a V8. <laughs> it's like going It's going from the worst to the best. Yeah. Uh, it has a feature that says, what's the least econo you know, yeah. 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 ecological route to take? Yeah, where can I gun it? It just says right. step on it. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of hard. You know, my, my son, who's uh, 17, really wants to drive the Mustang. I'm not going to let him. Oh, why Smart not? Because it'll be wrapped around a tree. No, it won't. You don't think so? Nah. Would you let JC drive a Mustang? Sure. V8, 350 horsepower? Yeah. You let him drive yours. <laughs> yeah. That's why he wants it. <sighs> Kids are pretty good. You know, as long as you... He's not, you, you know, it's not, you don't have a stick shift, though, right? You yeah, it's stick. Oh, has to learn stick. oh, I drove it. I just don't remember. Oh, the stick is great. Well, you can I'm drive so a stick. I'm glad they still make stick Yeah, shifts. obviously, yeah. I drove your car around. Oh, you know, of course, it's true, and I, I know automotive enthusiasts, Stig's going to get mad at me, but the modern automatic transmissions are much better Oh, yeah, than they're sticks. 10 times better. You the cannot, Ferrari has proven this with, yeah. their, with their race cars. You cannot drive as well, but it's sure more fun. You yeah. feel it. You, you feel, feel like you're doing better. Yeah. 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 And I think it's safer because I have to spend, I'm more alert. I'm aware, I'm driving instead of just kind of going. Yeah, I, I find it very difficult because, you know, you have a coffee in one hand, you have your phone no, in the yes, other hand. exactly. It's like, <laughs> you, you can't. It's difficult. All right. And so, San Francisco is a mess.
Oh no, I'm real good now. I pull I pull <laughs> the handbrake. Oh yeah, that's the trick. Yeah, yeah, I pull the handbrake. I I I pop the clutch. It's great. I know how to do a hill. You could put me on a 90 degree hill <laughs> and I could do it. What are you laughing at? It's a 90 degree. All right, 990. <laughs> Driving to heaven 70. <laughs> <laughs> and downshifting is fun. You're right. That's a, I know it's bad for the, It's not bad for the car, it's bad for the uh, clutch. It totally burns the clutch out. I've gone through eight clutches. What? No, I haven't. Because I never go to San Francisco. Downshifting doesn't hurt. Not downshifting, the, the popping the clutch when you're going up the hill, the pull, pulling the... Oh, and riding it. Riding it. Yeah. Love that. That's not good. Love it, though. Um, irrational exuberance, our thesis for this segment. Yeah. Yeah. This whole episode is about yeah. irrational exuberance. So I thought it was interesting. The Wall Street Journal ran an article. They've really been trying to tank the Facebook mm -hmm. IPO yeah. from day one. Yeah. They just hate Facebook. Yeah. I Everybody think does. Consumer Reports comes out with this news flash that people don't use proper privacy settings. It's like, well, well that's obvious. Yeah. It's like, wait. There's 8,000 of it, them. When they review a phone, they're, they're like, people are talking irresponsibly about their affairs <laughs> on the <laughs> telephone. <laughs> and I was surprised by how low the number was. It was something like 13% or something. Like I never that. even thought that these guys, but it's it, that's because these are competitors. That's that's to me. Now, when we've talked to Kara Swisher and others, she said, no, no, the editorial integrity of the Wall Street no. Journal is unimpeachable. <clears throat> these reporters oh, yeah. uh, are, are not being told what to say by Rupert Murdoch. No, they're not. I agree with that. Murdoch's not going to be calling reporters up. Hey, you know that Facebook, it's a bad idea. <laughs> he, he's Aust he is Australian. He is Australian. Yeah, he is yeah. um, what so, if he was German, what would he say? Ah, tongue. <laughs> How smack schnell the Facebook is bad idea. So the big doubt. Look at the headline on the Wall Street freaking journal. The big doubt over Facebook. Well, look. I mean, as journalists, you have you always have a little bit of showman in you, and it's like the obvious thing is everyone's really excited about the IPO. So if I'm writing a headline and I want to grab eyeballs, I'm going to make sure to say. Is something there a big like doubt? That. Well, no, the here's, here's another fact. By the way, the big doubt they're talking about is that Facebook advertising doesn't probably doesn't work. Well, uh, that's here, not true. Here's another thing. No, it's bogus. Here. You should buy an ad in the Wall Street Journal. It's so much better. Go ahead. I believe also that there's a lot. There's a subtle hatred of the writers with Facebook because they don't get any access. That's true. How many people have interviewed Zuckerberg? Scoble. Right. Scoble. Scoble. For another reason, you <laughs> right? No, the Journal <laughs> screw Scoble too. Alone. The Journal saying, "Who is this guy? <laughs> Why does he get to talk to Mark Zuckerberg?" <laughs> Who is this guy? Oh, look at all these photos he took. Actually, to be <laughs> honest, uh, Kara and Walt got a yeah. lot of face time with Zuckerberg. Remember, they made him sweat, and then and then Kara got him but to wasn't take that off on, his sweatshirt. Wasn't that on one it was of all the things D, D, but, D, but, that's, D, but that's, uh, that's not the same as getting the guy at his office. It's still a... It's, it's still and a, the other thing is there's a, something about exclusive. When you're a reporter, you want to get the guy in his office by yourself... So whatever he says, you have exclusively. But if you do it on a big stage, yeah. these guys can run no out and file a story before you even get off the stage. But, but in addition to in, in addition to the pettiness of the press, um, there's also some really interesting facts behind this skepticism, including one analyst pointed out that in order to justify its the valuation they're shooting for, uh, they would actually have to grow 41 percent per year over the next several years. Now I don't know if I could accept all of his data, but anyway, that's the point compared to well, other. You think that's unrealistic? Yeah, but, that's, but that's based totally on their, unrealistic. That's yeah. based on their point, on their I current so. revenue model, though. Yeah. Which which there's you mean so many the, things. You mean the uh, the numbers of users would have to grow? The, the, no, the num the amount of advertising revenue would have to grow by forty one percent. I don't think it's unreasonable, unreasonable well, just because uh, I think they're sitting on a tremendous number of ways to monetize. Exactly. Their, the, 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 that's true. The reason we value it so much. They barely scratched the surface of it. Facebook owns all of your secrets, and the fact that they've only shaved. Them they off have done of none of the blackmailing mean... that they can do in the future. There's lots of money okay, but, in that. Exactly. But, but see, there, there's a there's another side to that. When you start screwing people for like to to have that kind of 41 percent year over year growth, it's going to be you know then it's going to be chase difficult. People off, I agree. And now there are alternatives. Now that Google Plus exists, now there's no, used to be they had no <laughs> alternative. Google so Plus like, is not. I'm telling you, stop well, laughing. No, absolutely. Dude, it's an, if, you don't you don't argue with the empire, man. He loves Google's Google the Plus. empire. You're talking Google to the Google Plus, Plus man. That's right. Google it, Plus is not an alternative Google to anything. Google Plus is the Absolutely. Borg. They take Absolutely. a step it's forward, a board. and then the buzz, the, like you shoot the, off their arm, and buzz Seriously, goes, seriously and Mike, are you still as bullish on Google the Plus? G with an e. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm bullish on it for my own personal selfish reasons, which is that it's the only, You're uh, the only social person network there. that does yeah. everything that a blog does. It does what email does. It does what Twitter. everything does all in one place. And I don't have time to chase social networks all over the planet and, and to post a little here and a little there. I don't know how you do it, Leo. I just so post like, on Facebook. 
Well, it's because he doesn't do email. Anyway, but but the, the point is we'll that we'll talk about that in a second. In, the, I'm right. in order to really squeeze every yeah. nickel out of all those uh, 900 million users, Facebook would have to become, you know, actually really push the envelope in terms of uh, aggressive advertising and marketing toward their to, toward their folks. And there there's actually, you know, American pundits are always really down on Google Plus. Google Plus is absolutely on fire in almost every country outside the U.S. Oh, that's true. Uh, probably the, Brazil is one of the big yeah, ones, right? Yeah, don't, no, that's uh, really interesting. They got to top off? that down. Will you get absolutely. that one, Web? Yeah, I get, I get, you know, another. I get tons of new followers every day. Thousands of new followers every day, and ninety-two to ninety-five percent of them are outside the U.S. And, and people are really using it. Well, and so you see very, how that, totally that actually, global it actually shapes the narrative and the way you interact with Google+. Plus. Yeah. Because so many people are international, it, you'll notice that it's a very visual communication medium. Exactly. Rather than typing out your message, it's almost always better to take a photo of something right. to tell a story. Mike, Mike knows that. Look at this. I mean, photo, video, photo. Hey, he's got, photo. Hey, he That's just, your hey, pill. Hey, wait, wow. man, this is the last 20 minutes of your life. Photo. What happened? What's my Mike, beer Mike doing is apparently in there? posting during this entire show. Yeah, who knew? Yeah. Mm. Scoble. <laughs> photo. Photo, photo, Scoble. Photo, photo. Scoble. Scoble's What's photo. That? That's kind of cool. <laughs> that, that, See? That, Visual medium. That's right. The it's the arresting it just got you right in, didn't it? Yeah. I, I just feel like that. Yeah, it's like uh, Pinterest. But I use it as a blog. It's a blog, as far as I'm concerned. Plus, it's also a social network to a lesser degree. How many followers do you have now? I have 1.1 million. Wow. I have th less than 300,000. I got like 40. Why do I have so few? Because you're not doing what he does. You're not pushing it. I don't think it has anything Th to do with that. The, yeah. Well, I think... I mean, I think it has to do with something called the suggested user list. But but the reason is I Is there a suggested user list? Is. But the reason... Oh. I haven't heard about that? It's a but scam. One of the reasons I'm on it, though, I think, is that is that I post, you know, I tend to right. 15 items a day. They, I don't know why they took me off of it. Anyway, it's not why I don't like it. Because you sit on the show and bitch and moan. It's not <laughs> why I don't like it. I just don't... I think Facebook is the place to be, and I'm not on their suggested so, user list either. But the bigger issue is that it is an alternative, I think, for users, and it's going to be an alternative for advertisers. They're going to roll out advertising, and it's going to be connected with Search and Yahoo and all that. I mean, uh, I'm Well, sorry, it's YouTube. clear that Google's going to use its muscle to make Absolutely. it work. Absolutely. But, but here's the yeah. important thing. I'm not sure regardless, like that couldn't do that with the regardless other thing. of whether I, or not... Or cut. Regardless of whether or not Google Plus <laughs> is the alternative to Facebook. The fact That's is, we have already seen yeah. a bubble emerge in social media and get utterly destroyed with MySpace, only to be taken up with Facebook. Yeah. There, we, you already have the concern about the fact that something's valued at a billion dollars with no physical product whatsoever. And then you have the concern about the fact that we already watched a very fickle market abandon mm -hmm. one platform virtually overnight yeah. to run MySpace. to another one. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like, so that's the uncertainty. Before. That's yeah. the uncertainty. Facebook's S1 confirms they're going to ask... For five to six point three billion dollars, four billion of that will go to Mark Zuckerberg. That's nice. It must feel good. Yeah. But um, the one good good thing overlooked in this is Mark Zuckerberg himself. Who was the guy that was the MySpace guy? Tom. Tom, Tom Anderson. Anderson. My, He's also my close on, personal his friend. BFFs on uh, on uh, with Trey Ratcliffe now. Yep. He is. He's, in fact, if you look if you look at all his photos, they look like Trey Ratcliffe photos. Yeah. He's stolen Trey Ratcliffe's mojo. I, I, I just want to point out him. that my profile on Facebook yeah. features a large picture of me with Tom Anderson. Yeah! Uh -huh. Yeah! Just a little inside joke there. And it yeah, looks even better, hilarious. too, because, like, you look annoyed that he's hanging on to you. I know. I don't right? want like, to see you guys coattails. holding hands. I'm basically saying, saying like, Mr. Laporte, illegal Mr. go Tennessee. away. Go away. I got an idea for you. Facebook over. It's all about... <laughs> no, anyway, uh, so this is the Facebook... They did a roadshow. You know, when you do the IPO, you go around to the investors, the yep. big institutions, and, and you give a, make the case yeah. for why they should buy Facebook stock. Yeah, it's called the roadshow. The roadshow. They're not doing a traditional roadshow. They're doing a net roadshow. Oh, that's smart. Uh, here's know. the disclaimer that you have to either reject or accept. <clears throat> How many people have read this? Nobody. You should not rely upon forward-looking statements as predictions of future events. That's the bottom line right there. Uh, U.S. Oh, good. Look at this. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission urges you to read the preliminary prospectus before making an investment decision. All right, all right. I just want to see Mark Zuckerberg in a T-shirt. By the way, what you're doing right now is a very strong case for why there shouldn't even be these regulations. You're clearly not reading them. You're just right. like, words, words, something. Look Where at can this. I give my and money? now I have to see a crawl like Star Wars. of yeah. the Star Wars crawl of the same thing that I just agreed to. All of this is required by the SEC. Um, I don't know if Jobs will change this or not. Not Steve Jobs, but the Jobs bill. Um, 
But the point being, Mark Zuckerberg does actually do a road show in a T-shirt on the Flip -flops web. And, a and in a way, this is an argument for the success of uh, Facebook, the fact that they could even, that you know, that this is the modern way of doing it, right? I think that in so many ways, Jesus, uh, this we, is are, a long we are seeing the virtualization of our entire lives. We are seeing virtual analogs to just about every aspect of real life, right down to, in fact, you know, like from a magic perspective, I'm trying to figure out how I can create something that would uh, that would simulate local magic clubs, something with like a... Um, Is this uh, your... Are you pitching me now? Uh, What's you going know what? On Maybe here? I should, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like a Google if Hangout had, type thing. Can I read the prospectus before uh, <laughs> It's like, if you want to make money on the internet, all you have to do is look out and see what real-life activities have not yet been virtualized well, well, where you can get actually, most of the benefit. to refine that idea, to look at what would be... The experience would be improved or made cheaper through nope. digitization. Nope. Absolutely, because nope. there are some nope. things nope. that will never be replaced. It's improved by the fact that I don't even have to get in my car to do it, and Does that's all have... the improvement I need. Does he look normal? No, his eyes have like, he has this makeup thing around his eyes that's like white. I did a post on this. <laughs> it, he's, he doesn't look normal. There's something now weird going on. To all of this there's a gun pointed at him. The thing that seemed like it was look, at, really look at his face and tell. imagine right, there's so like three pistols aimed at him, and he's like, I think Mark Zuckerberg's eyes are abnormally large. I think his so heart is big. I think there was really, I think it's the spacing. They're widely spaced. He hasn't blinked yet. If you he notice. also has a very low forehead, which he has that, usually oh, no, indicates one. poor intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> he does have nice biceps, however. He's got a uh, a horse face, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is brutal. Well, I'm just saying. It's not. I don't say it's a bad thing. He doesn't not eat anything that he doesn't kill himself. I is that right? That. Is that a fact? Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, that's his thing. He 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 killed a buffalo, and now he's got a freezer full of buffalo meat. He kills pigs, killed his chickens. dog once, and yeah. now he's eating dog meat. Yeah. No, yeah. you guys are just putting no. me on. No, 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 this is a real thing. This yeah. is a news thing a while ago. He's wow. gonna be. He so looks he a little won't weird. Go to uh, Whole Foods and buy a no. dead fish. No, not unless he can kill it. Maybe it's live. <laughs> so he can go to Chinatown, though, where so they keep the Chinatown, fish and thing. And right. he get, and That's he right. has, does he take the bat? You know, in the Chinese, they beat the fish in the store. You ever seen that? I like it. Evil IRC says. He killed privacy as we know it. Now, now he's, he's eating, he's lunch. eating privacy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, I have I no know. idea about it. that's kind of that's very. I interesting. respect that man. I think that's that's. that's I awesome. actually do yeah, respect until he that. starts hunting you. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> is that catch the, me first? Is that uh, what is that the uh, deadly the most deadly game? Is yeah, that the what deadliest it's called? game. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Most Ever dangerous know. game. Evernote, interesting story here. Now, how much is Evernote worth? I, I love Evernote. I've recommended. In fact, once Phil Leibin, the CEO of Evernote, told me that 4.7 percent of all the uh, Evernote downloads were because of me. You really? Yeah. Okay. Did now, you get I, a piece of the action? No. Did, you get, did you get a pen or a Nothing. watch or a gift? A small <laughs> box? Said, was, was, he said we source. You know, where did you hear about Evernote? 4.7 percent. Leo Laporte. You should make Evernote pay for all the new Dvorak shirts. <laughs> I'm I, buying Dvorak a bunch of shirts. Can I confess something? I have no idea what to do with Evernote. I've never used it. I downloaded I it, about it. What and is I've it? never used it. What, what I, I is it? it? I have no I idea. It. Okay, what so here's what it is. It's a place where you... It's, it, think of it as cloud storage without files. So you basically... Uh, you just click a button when you're on a website. It takes that page and just stores it for you. The coolest thing that Evernote does is you take a, a picture of something with I its love app. This part. You upload it, and it actually OCRs the photograph. So you can take a this picture. This is if of a, you pay for a pro account. Yeah, if you can take a picture of a menu, and then later search for hamburger, and it brings up the menu. Hmm. See, so it's, now that would be kind of it's interesting. It's really cool. It's a so cool you one. use it. I use it, and you I'm a paid user. Account. I have the pro account. Me too. Yes. So how much does the pro, pro account? It's not much. Oh, I don't remember. So it's, it's like a few it, bucks. Yeah, it's like yeah. I don't the know. analog would be like this is a bionic memory. Where yeah, it's, it's, like, it's supposed to be a prosthetic and it's memory. On everything. Yeah. It's yeah. on your phone, it's on your tablet, it's on your desktop, it's on your laptop, and it automatically syncs everywhere. Yeah. So even if I use it in kind of weirdly trivial ways. For instance, yeah. I wanted an a, the API key for Bitly on my phone, but I didn't have, I, I couldn't get there. So I surfed to it on the web, copied it, pasted it in Evernote. Seconds later, it had synced, and I had it on my phone, and I copied it from the phone. It's just weird that way. You have so all this all, information. All the things that I'm doing right now just by emailing photos of yes. crap or notes to myself. Store it in Evernote. This, oh. Oh, my and God. there's plugins everywhere for there's every 4. browser. There's 4.7 numbers going up. And but here's why it's a, <laughs> but here's why it's a great bit. We we're talking about the valuation. Here's why it's a great a value as a company. Once they've got you, you're not going anywhere. Right. I mean, I've Good invested several years it's like pouring banking. my life in there, and right. it's like I couldn't possibly stop using. You're it. screwed. I'm screwed. Well, that it's sucks. Ultimate, <laughs> it's, well, it's unless you're an investor. 
Because they're, they're no, but so I can't get this data out. I'm stuck with their no, it's, no. You can get like it out. Cloud can, no, no, it's I'm all stuck with it's them. all RTFs. It's always on every platform. So I have everything here. I can export it as an you RTF. But you won't. You won't. Export but you could. It. You could. I think. But then you lose the the power of the of the of the smart database. But you could put it in some other database. The, the point is that you they get you using it, and it's like it becomes really important to you, and you can't really you know. Here's a recording that I put on Evernote. So this is the other thing you can do is you can record yeah, audio. Audio. Yeah, so it's really, it's kind of a handy... You don't record enough audio? Well, <laughs> no, I wanted to remember this. Well, I'll tell you... I'm not hearing anything. Is there any self-organization that it does? Yeah, any the easy way to separate it, different thoughts it's got into pretty categories? Good it's, no, but it's... Well, you, it has you tagging and stuff like that. It's but a flat it has, file, giant flat file. You don't need to sort anything. You just say, I want everything about it does coffee. Have, it does everything. have folders, but it's got a very fast search. And, ta and has tags, which I don't use because I'm lazy, but it you can search. It's it, you know. It's I basically, stored... I, I arrive at the parking lot going to Norway. Took a picture of where I was. Yeah. It's in Evernote when I get back. You can't remember where you're parked? No. No. Can huh. you? Yeah, well, yeah, duh. I get to a hotel. I check in. The room is there. It's a room number. I know I'm going to forget it. I take a picture of it. Smart. I do that, too. You can't you, remember the room no. that you were assigned to? As you Dude. get older, you, <laughs> too, will You will discover... This. Wow, you did I just dropped a dude and you didn't jump on me for it. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Is that, is that if I'd have heard it, I would have said is something. Is that a new phrase the kids caught? Uh, I, I not dropped a dude. Every time I accidentally say dude, he interrupts me and goes, dude. Dude. That's that, because it's a, something you shouldn't be saying. Why? Was it a dirty word? No, it's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped a dude, man. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like dude? Yeah, it sounds, sounds like, like a dope turn. 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 Sounds like a bathroom like reference. Our gut. I'm going to turn it over to the I got to go now. drop a dude. Drop the dude. dude. It's, it's all bro. bro. Whatever, bro. Bro ham. You got to <laughs> relax, JCD. Bro. Take it easy, bro. <laughs> relax, JCD. Bro, bro. ham. <laughs> um, Evernote valued at a billion dollars based on their new uh, right, now here's, funding. Here's the thing. Is, uh, is wow. this... Wow. Smarter or less smart than Instagram being a billion dollars? It's worth more than Instagram, don't you think? I mean, my gut tells me that, but I don't know nothing. Instagram, of course, Instagram has, has, has photos. 50 Do million you use users. Instagram? Yeah. Here's the thing. They, they, have, they have some actual proprietary technology that's actually valuable and interesting. Right. The other thing is that they're about to go into China. And if you look at Apple's recent report, it's all about China. The manufacturing in China is yes. beneficial for Apple Huge and market. the market. And they haven't even cracked the big carrier in china so china is really making apple what it is the, the runaway success and it's going to do the same thing for evernote the th thing that freaks me out about is the ceo of, phil liban is fantastic yeah phil liban he's they asked him well what about you know the chinese government hackers getting in and getting everybody's data and he basically said well you can't really stop them so we're not worrying about it so that, he's right by the way he's right but um it's kind of it, it's still well, it's, it's not a good so place to much start. data is something you don't have to worry about it's like you're it's like finding a needle right. in a haystack yeah. if you're looking for anything. Yeah, It's interesting because they raise the money even though they don't need it. Phil Leibman says, we didn't raise the money because we have uh, we No, we, that's we actually need the smart. Money. That's old old school thinking. Yeah, you raise money when you don't need it. If you try to raise it when you need it. You yeah, you're screwed. They screw you. They, they, they give, take too much of the company. Yeah, if you don't need it, they, you can So do, I should raise money now. Yeah. 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 Uh, Meritech Capital, CBC Capital, putting in another $70 million. They'd already raised $96 million. They got 156 million dollars in the bank. I'm sorry, 166 in the bank. Yeah, they should scan it and put it into Evernote. They <laughs> yeah, then they could access it whatever yeah. they wanted it. So, yeah. so uh, getting back to our original premise, there's a joke in there. Irrational somewhere. exuberance. Hold on, you just blew my mind about scanning money and putting it in it. Why? Why can we not do that with currency right now? We do that with checks. Uh, why can't you uh, print uh, out your right. own money? Have have to listen, home. listen then, to our triangulation show from Wednesday. We interviewed, was his name Bill Harris? I think it was Bill, yeah, Harris, Bill Harris of Personal Capital. This is an interesting guy because he decided about 15 years ago that the next big transition was going to be in finance. Yeah. And he's former CEO at PayPal. He is. Uh, he was uh, big at, um, what was his second company? I can't remember. Well, in, Intuit and PayPal. Intuit. Yeah. And uh, he started this Personal Capital. But what he says is, exactly what you say he said uh what's happening is physical media is di going to disappear in finance there's no point for physical uh, phys for physical well yeah if you need cash just print it out and each one of course has a it could be called a check you look, could write it out too look, you know and well, sign yeah. it. look how we yeah. but look how you deposit a check now you take a picture of it on your phone no why not what i do everything i do everything i, I do you use stamps for, you probably use stamps 
Use stamps. Dude. You know, I wish I had a stamps.com <laughs> ad. Dude. I want cash with my yeah, own Yeah, we had two on. opportunities for stamps.com. All right, I want to talk about security because I got to tell you, I read three articles this morning that gave me, that made me absolutely, completely depressed. The That's future sucks. So unlike you. Yeah, I'm normally optimistic. Well, a cashless yeah. society should be one of those things. Yeah, no kidding, because <laughs> then hacking you will be so easy. Well, yeah. no, because everything everything will be trackable, though. You can't. Well, go you know spend what he says. The issue is, no where it goes. and I think this is true. It's an authentication <laughs> issue. If the if you have perfect authentication between buyer and seller, then there's no risk, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know you're Mike. I know I'm Leo. You know I'm Leo, and so we can have that transaction. That's where we kind of, you know, money and cat and checks are kind of uh, uh, problematic. But if you have an authentication, you can solve this. Transactions so, can be. Let's safe. say we get to this what point. if the government decides to just to take all your money? You gotta, you gotta. Well, that's why. Okay, so that's you why you gotta it's a trust the government. No, you don't. It are all you comes down me? to trusting the government. Yeah, what well, is that's, this? that's, that's the craziest what, that's... thing I've ever heard you say in four years of this show. <laughs> no, but that's what you he actually believes, and that's kind of what you believe. Wait, it sounds with like. the government? Are you kidding me? No, look. Here's the thing. Uh, so let's say you get perfect authentication. The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have an alternate form of currency that's 100% anonymous. Bitcoin. For every, well, yeah, exactly. You're going to have a BitTorrent of currency, basically, right. where it's completely shadow net, and you have you can spend your money on whatever you want. Nobody's going to track you. And that's a good thing, right? I'm just checking. Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding? Just want to know. Why are you looking at me? What? It's unbelievable. What's what? unbelievable? Not to go on. Do, is, he do pot, an ad. is he a pie-eyed optimist? Is I thought you were going to say saying? pothead. <laughs> I did. I All thought right, I'm going to drop a dude, and then uh, we'll be back with more on John Bro, C. Dvorak, well, you gotta... Brian Brushwood, Mike Elgin. This is the most disorganized twit we have ever done. That's because the old reliable is here. <laughs> is that a power book? It's an old power book. This is what I use Like the home. 110? Remember that? And, and so now we know why you don't like Apple. He's got flying <laughs> toasters on. I love Apple. Don't kid yourself. Some, I keep getting a tweet from somebody who says, why do you have John on? He's the guy who said nobody would ever use a mouse. I never said that. It was in 1984. I wrote a column. And I, by the way, I've re reproduced this column by a, with a photocopier. What it actually said was I was outlining 16 reasons why the Macintosh may fail. And by the way, I did a secondary column three or four years later when uh, Larry Tesla uh, told, asked if what, what was I all screwed up. 14 of the reasons were right. And in the column it said I, one of the 16 reasons was a mouse. There is no evidence. There's no evidence that anyone wants to use these things. It was new to the market, and I, I didn't know whether it was going to go or not. I just said there's no evidence. Fast forward to July last year, why Windows 8 might fail. <laughs> Same seven reasons. <laughs> Same seven reasons. Hey, but you know the different. The difference is that the Apple, the fanboy, Apple fanboys will never forgive John. No, no. ever. They they love it. So yeah. Well, okay. So I recycle these types of problems. <laughs> So you I, know what? That's how you You're, make a living. You can't lose. That's You're why, you, that's why right. you need Evernote. You just scan all your columns. Exactly. And Until the Chinese get a hold of them. Oh, we're in trouble now. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with more. I want to talk about security. Uh, I am not going to talk about Nokia suing people. I don't care. Uh, I am maybe going to talk about the fact that the FBI wants a backdoor in Facebook, Skype. Oh, the hell's email. yes, we will. And email. The email stuff that you talked about on your yeah. show. And we'll talk about email. Is it causing stress in your life? This is, I, I wanted, I got, I heard Leo do this on his radio show, and I realized it was a self-serving argument that was totally bogus, and I'm going to call him on <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> and then we're going to go gaming, because uh, Diablo 3 coming out, and... Skyrim MMO, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit with Schwood, Elgin, and Dvorak, my law firm. First, <laughs> oh, it is. Sounds good. Schwood, I can see the reception is now. Schwood, Elgin, and Dvorak. Schwood, Elgin, and Dvorak. I can't even say it. Schwood, Elgin. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I've had too many of these. It's not the port. It's the chocolate it's the almonds. Nuts. Whacked on cocoa. I'm whacked on cocoa. Audible.com. You know what I'm listening to right now? What is the it? The stand. Are you are you taking the plunge? Awesome. Are you diving all the way in? Awesome. For years you could not get the complete uncut like version you'd never seen before. And until that's what finally, I'm listening to. It's yeah. like this giant 43 hour extravaganza. <sighs> so good. That was the one that started me. And you know you know that's all tied into the Dark Tower universe. I know. Right? And and you know I've been reading the Dark Tower on your behest. <laughs> yes. The new Dark Tower has come out. I can't do that one on Audible though. Because it's read by Stephen King. Oh, he's not a good reader? The man in black fled across the desert, oh, and the gunslinger followed. Oh, no. 
Hey, that's, that's good. That's the first that's, line in the end scene. That's very good. <laughs> the wind through the keyhole is the newest uh, Dark Tower. Is he really near? Oh, it is. Let's yeah. just I don't listen a little bit. All right, bit. I'll give him the benefit of the, the doubt. Flat, Let's do this. The flat main accent of this. Stephen King, ladies By and gentlemen. By the time Canfield, the Jefferson Ranch's newest proddy, which is to say hired hand, reached the home place, the screaming had stopped. He's got a speech impediment, I admit. But, <laughs> but, but there's a certain authenticity to the, it's his, the man's words, and he's the greatest writer of our time. Yes. He's certainly one of the, the most, uh, what, all the best writers tend to be the most prolific. I mean, have you read his book on writing? Yes. It is phenomenal. It's called it is life, writing. It's, it's, it's life changing. Wonderful. Yeah. It's no. It's, he talks about how um, how you should never use adverbs because if you need to use an adverb, it's because you're not painting the rest of the picture properly. You know what's funny? I was listening to eleven twenty two sixty three. It's full of adverbs. Is it? Yes. <laughs> and every time there was an adverb, I'm going, Stephen. Shame on you. Shame on you. Mr. King, have you learned nothing? You raised yourself better than this. <laughs> the stand is really good. It really is. You know is. what I like about the stand? For, it is 47 hours and yep. 56 minutes. Let's call it 48 hours. Mm. Uh, it is a lot of different stories tied together with Hold a theme. Together. And I love it because you're list, what you're listening to is a master storyteller and it's his sketches. Because some of these stories are one page, two pages, three pages. And he is so brilliant at characterization, story, plot. Just plain writing. You know what? Else? That each of these stories has a life of its own. These characters live, and he only has a. F it's 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 like watching Picasso paint. It's amazing. What I also love are stories that start off as one tale but become another tale. Yes. So when you begin, you're seeing an apocalyptic mo uh, kind of a collage of all, of the destruction of humanity, the end of the world. That's right? the premise of the stand. Is it's a. A, a, the flu the that was created by the army right, is released. Right, pandemic, right? It's pandemic. And then you have a, a second chapter that's all about sort of this very non-supernatural restructuring of society, how we all get along, where we, how we set up the rules now that everything's gone to crap. And then the third chapter is classic Stephen King, or the, 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 the end act is all this very supernatural end of the world, how's it going to turn out kind of thing. Not entirely unlike the show, actually. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> act three coming up in which we end the world. the world. Uh, oh, sorry, save the world. <laughs> it's the Dr. Evil chair it just every time. So, look, what what is Audible? Audible is a, a bookstore of audiobooks, 100,000 strong. Um, you can buy the books a la carte, of course. I liked, I have a subscription. Uh, you know, I have a subscription, but I still buy some books a la carte. Do you? Well, because I'll go through, and I like to have two or three credits available at any time. Oh, and you don't want to spend your credits. Well, exactly. I like having the backup, so it's like I'll get... Uh, I'll run out and all of a sudden I'll, I'll, I always look at the price of the book and if right. some of the books are only $10, 11 You just buy them. And I'm like, yeah, let's just go. But then other ones, I'm like $20. I'm like, oh, I'll do better with the credit. Boom. Then I buy it on boom. the credit. Boom. Dude. Um, <laughs> bro. <laughs> bro. 20 great ways to use your credits right at the top there. You could look at that at audible.com. They've got 20 wonderful books to start you off, including Stephen King's latest, 11 63 Actually, it's no longer his latest. Man, that guy is prolific. He's got he that really new is. book. It was, it's a good one. Did you like the ending of that one? I did. Traditionally, he doesn't do well at the endings, but I thought he really We're nailed it We're talking about 11 63 yeah. and I think we talked about this last time. It was his son who came up with the ending, not him. Oh, that's right. We he did credits talk about his this. son, yeah. and I think it's very interesting. It is wonderful. Oh, and I misspoke. It was Lock and Key is the comic book that Joe Hill does, okay. which uh, is very good, and he Thanks for the well. correction. Um, Boy, there's some. Oh, the name of the wind, Patrick Rothfuss. This oh, is, have you read it yet? I've, it's on my. Uh, it's on my iPhone. Leo, I'm, it's believe the hype. It is. I've never seen such an awesome, consistent universe where magic makes sense. You know what? I stop. I was gonna listen, but I had just finished Clash of Kings, and I thought I can't go into another one. Yes, it is similar. So I'm listening to the stand as an anodyne to cleanse the palate. It's a rather long amuse bouche, and then I shall continue on. With Fair Patrick Rothfuss. But you see, now, this is what happens when audible listeners get together. It's like, oh, but you got to. Have you tried the. Right. I'm but telling you, you you're that missing. You do the other one. I know. You're missing out if you're not an audible subscriber. So here's the deal you get two books free. What's going to happen if you go to. The, this is the deal that we have only for Twit audible.com slash twit2. Uh, that's the platinum account, two books a month. That's, my, that's what I do. Uh, and the first month is free. The first two books are free. You get two credits. So. Clash of Kings is two credits, but most of the books are one credit. I think even The Stand is one credit. No way. I can't be Four, right. 48 hours, no, no I can't way. be. That's Usually it's based on length. Yeah. I don't know. Try it out. Audible. Well, you can get The Stand. 
because it's two credits. The stand Audible. is Audible.com slash twit2. And really, for anybody who wants to do the Great Dark Tower experiment, because Tom, I got Tom Merritt to do it. Should you start with the stand? Start with the stand, because it is it will stand completely on its own. It's one right. of his very best works, and it sets the framework for some interesting things that happen later on. Now, I read the stand in a paperback that was eight inches thick many years ago, but it's fun to go back. And you know, it's funny how little I remember, so I'm actually enjoying it. Um, the Dark Tower, there are seven of them. Uh, I have already read the first three. I'm at Wizard and Glass. So I'm going oh, to the so stand. You're, okay, so you're oh, yeah, in, I'm already you're, embarked. You're in the groove at this I'm already point. in the groove. I got past the lobster things. The <laughs> you didn't like the lobster I didn't like the lobster That was not good. Lobstrosities. Lobstrosities. Did a chick, did a chick. Did a chick, did a chick, did a Actually, I guess I did like it because it worked. It scared the yeah, hell out of me. Clearly, it stuck with you. Anyway, Audible, you got to try it. I don't know why I'm even doing it. I shouldn't have to sell this. I should just say, everybody go get your free books at Audible. Just remember the code. I haven't heard the code yet. Twit2. Audible.com slash twit and the number two. And um, I guess it goes without saying, this will play on all sorts of devices. They have iPhone, uh, Android. The Windows phone is coming any minute now. Paul Thrott has the beta. It's really sweet. Uh, I do like using the clients, but you can also sync it up with uh, iTunes because... Uh, uh, it also supports it that way. Audible.com slash twit2. So, um, FBI says, we want back doors. We want wiretap-ready websites. We want a way to see what you're doing on Facebook. And they've been lobbying Yahoo. They've been lobbying Google. They're quietly meeting with Microsoft, uh, talking about Hotmail and Skype. They're quietly meeting with Facebook. They want a government, a legislative proposal, it was drafted by the FBI, that would require social networking sites and VoIP like Skype, instant messaging, and email providers to alter their code to make their products wiretap friendly. <sighs> you know, it just breaks Skype. I mean, it's just stupid. Bro, tell you what it breaks is my freaking heart. What kind of yeah. what the hell country is this anymore? It's the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, which was passed in 1994. That requires all phone systems to be wiretap ready. All right, I'm, let's argue. And you could get into this too. Do you care? Uh, they, they're already wiretapping everything. Well, okay, now, and that's the thing. We should but point here's out the that, argument. That There's bad guys doing stuff on Facebook. Wait a minute, that makes no sense. So There's bad guys doing stuff on Skype. <laughs> of course that we can't listen to because we're the FBI and we don't have the technology because it's encrypted and we can't hear them so we can't arrest them. Look, uh, I mean, I don't even know where to Tell begin. Tell get a court thing. order. Yeah, well, I mean. Well, no, but they can get a court order, but it doesn't help because Skype is encrypted. They're telling Skype, Microsoft, you got to rewrite it's the Skype. problem. Code. No, it's all of our problem because bad guys are bad for all of us. It's well, that's the old argument. Everyone's a bad guy. There's probably some bad guy lurking. Why don't we just put a camera in everybody's house? Yeah, the question is, like, you hear this kind of thing, and they make a very compelling argument of, like, no, it would be really easy for us to catch more bad guys. And that's true. It would make it way easy. It would also make it way easy for you to vastly overstep the bounds of your yeah, charter. Yeah, make it easy for any, do. once that, that back door is in, which is essentially what we're talking about. Well, why don't we just any take... Any schmuck could probably tap into it because there's hack, more, the hackers... Why don't we just take guns are, away from the police? In fact, why don't we just take the cars away because it makes it easier for them to arrest good guys as well as bad guys. Why don't we just... Well, do, let's we, eliminate police. Why don't we just get into more specious arguments, which are that's off topic? That's not specious. Totally. How is that specious? We're saying give the law enforcement officials the tools they what need they to apprehend no, what criminals. You're saying is give them what they and want. you're saying, well, don't give them tools because they might apprehend innocent people as well. But that's always the case. Well, okay. Yeah, here's the thing. It is very, very important to have good... So by your logic, they should just shoot everybody. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly no, what you said. No, I'm saying... It is accepted practice. You give law enforcement officials tools they need to enforce the laws, and you have to have safeguards, obviously, like court oversight, so that they don't overstep and do it, go on fishing. We do have the, what is it, the Fourth, fourth, Amendment, fourth Amendment that protects us Amendment. against unreasonable search and seizure. That's right. That's, that's in the Constitution. I understand that. But we don't we don't then ellipse, strip away all powers from law what enforcement specific, because we don't trust them. What specific, except for Skype... What specific specific website or blog or any of these things do they need to have some special access to? Well, I think you criminal can't organizations with, you can't get with Web Copy or or, uh, or Black Widow or any of these crawlers. They're basically just trying to make it quicker. Uh, if they no 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 okay well let's okay Facebook you're right 
Facebook, they probably could get this. Although Facebook does have privacy controls, right? So they probably still need a court order to see what's oh, going the on. The FBI in a is working at Facebook. I mean, don't you remember that 60 Minutes show and Mueller? Uh, All right. Comes Let's talk the then about Skype and instant messaging because there's encrypted instant messaging. Sure. I'm a bad guy. I want to communicate with you, John, because we're going to plan okay. a bank robbery. Okay, and so the now now I know the FBI's got a back door. So now I'm going to just send you encrypted messages that are encrypted by me and that you hold the key to. So the Skype encryption means nothing. Well, because I'm going to bypass the whole system. What, what, my, are, what are they going to do? What my friends in law enforcement tell us is, of course, a smart bad guy can get around anything by using, say, TrueCrypt, but most bad guys are stupid. So and we know that, which means they're probably not using Skype. But well, but they again, might like, be. I, I, we just want to make not... sure that we have the means to wiretap them in, in case. So in case they... Why the, the... are you not outraged by this, John? This is what I don't understand. Like, like I understand. Yes, he it's going to be in, in effect. I'm not outraged. It's not. Oh, you guys are both crazy. Look, the thing is, there is a constant push pull between this this privacy hygiene that was so important to the founding fathers that they wrote it into the MFing constitution. It's Agreed. number four, right on the Agreed. list. Agreed. But they also said that there should be law. They didn't say there's no law enforcement and law enforcement needs tools. They said it's a checks and balances. Law enforcement has tools. The difference is, is it, should it be legal to have private conversations that you can guarantee are private electronically? That's the question. So well, every you, time... But you I, can't I've, do that on the phone this, right this now. Is what the, I categorize this in, in, in a larger phenomenon, which is that every time there's an advancement in technology, authorities, law enforcement, government, and so on, use the advancement of technology to seize additional powers for themselves, to, to tip the balance in their favor between the public's rights and their own capabilities. And this is yet another example. So every time we move forward with technology, they grab more. And so it gets to the point where they can listen to everything. They're, it's not that they're listening. It's not just a bunch of FBI agents sitting in Washington yeah, listening to calls. Conflate, they have, I don't want to conflate computers. a fishing expedition, which we agree is a bad thing. That is clearly prohibited by the Constitution. We're not talking and about allowed that. allowed by the no, uh, but they do it. Patriot Act. They do it on telephones, story. and they want to be able to do it on Skype, well, too. Well, okay, and I will fight, you're right, against the Patriot Act. I don't think law enforcement should be allowed to fish in then the sense that libertarian. If, here's, if there is no evidence of wrongdoing, here's the that we can then use these tools to look for it. That's And that is unconstitutional. Here, here's, that should always be wrong. But we're not saying that. We're saying if a duly constituted official of the government wants to thinks that there is a crime being committed, he goes to a judge and says, Your Honor, here's the evidence for a crime being committed. I would like a wiretap. This is the process. Uh, and the judge says, reviews it, gives checks and balances. This says, okay, I agree. You have probable cause. Go ahead and do that wiretap. Now, we can do it in phones. The issue that the, the law enforcement has is that there are now technologies that they can't tap. And they want to have the true. same situation That's not true. they okay. have with phones. So here's the thing. Should the, we not have wiretaps on telephones? No, uh, well, here's the, here's the difference, right? Is The difference is, is the same ability has always existed. If the government suspects you of a specific crime and gets a warrant... They can go and ask you to open any single thing and check inside. And that's always the way it's been. All this would allow them to do is to snoop without ever tipping you off. And it's important. Sunlight well, has a sanitizing effect. I agree effect. that's You've got wrong. to do everything in the open. I agree that's wrong. And I agree the Patriot Act is wrong and the FISA courts are wrong. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I think fishing expeditions are wrong. But let's... Why, but are about, you going to then let, use let that me turn as this around. Let me turn this around. Why is it not appropriate for them to get a warrant and say, we really think you're planning a crime on Facebook. Please open up your account and let me take because a look. Because what the judge will say is, okay, I need probable cause. I need your evidence that there is a crime it's being a, It's the same standard of evidence either way. The only difference is, one, you actually knock on my door and make me be the one to open it up. The other one, no, you don't even inform no, me and no, go snooping no, around on no, my no, stuff. No, no, no. I'm talking about a wiretap. Let's say uh, there is, there is. we do this now. There's phone wiretaps, no, right? Is there? What? No, I'm teasing. <laughs> so uh, you're right. Never I'm talking about search it. and seizure. That's different. I'm right. talking about a phone wiretap. That's legal. There is an oversight situation. There's a way this works. All they're saying is we want the same capabilities. The problem is we have these systems that we no longer can tap. But you can do that in ways that don't require all of these internet businesses to be in on the act to make ah, them complicit on it. Now that's you a good point. You can already handle that. That's a good point because what we're now saying is you must change the technology yeah, dude, to give they, us a back door. Get a warrant and go stick a USB stick right. on there that does a key log all right, or whatever. You win. There You're exists. Right. We don't need he any more right laws argument. for this. He made the right argument. But I think there's something else that needs to be mentioned is that the real reason that you want these back doors if you're a government, uh, especially into something like Skype, is that whether we like it or not, uh, the NSA, is a, it, with their various 
nodes around the country are essentially just sucking up everything on yeah. the internet and the, for future analysis. Right. Yeah. And they can't suck up anything from the And that's Skype. the ultimate fishing expedition. You're talking about things like Echelon. Sucking up everything and then going and then, then doing it, then looking up everything right. Brush Root Woods up to <laughs> to find out that he lied on his resume mm -hmm. sometime oh, back no. when. And we circle now around. Now it's out. I made up a plan to honors program. <laughs> By the way, you don't believe me. Just say bomb, falafel, hummus, <laughs> uh, American warlords on the phone and see what happens. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, I, but you know, you I'm would if you do. You, I, people have tested this. There's a lot of mo weird kind of monitoring going on at your credit card. If you go and if you want to get your credit card killed on the spot. You do the following. And this was told to me by the one-time CEO of American Express. I'm going to back it up because I did it the other day and it, it killed my credit killed card. Killed your card. Yeah. You go and you buy two tanks of gas. Two, not one. Two tanks. You got to have your friend, like, you have your wife drive up and you drive, you fill up one car, fill up, like, you know, 14, 15, 16 gallons, fill up the other tank, and which is tough when you have a truck that has two tanks, by the way, and then buy a pair of Nikes. Your card will be dead on the spot. Will it work with Air Jordans? Or Air Jordans, whatever. Why? Okay. Because they, they they believe the card was stolen, and the, the first thing African a guy does Americans is, love athletic shoes. No, hmm. this is a racist. It's a very racist. A thing. racist. The first thing. thing that people do is they buy gasoline for their car, and, and the then second buy thing they do is buy some gasoline for their buddy. It's racist. Hmm. And then they go then they buy, go buy some sneakers. sneakers. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 you go do it, and you'll get your card. Killed. But I have to say, this is all statistical, and it's just what they know. Yeah, they don't. They're Nine not doing based on 10, race. You're a bad guy. So uh, yeah, you can have your card. And so killed. this is okay with you, but the FBI wire having. I didn't back said it was okay. Oh, okay. It's right. disgusting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the anyway, short version. Too long. Did not read. The fact is, is there already exist ways to get any information they want, and they, there's no need to decide that it's somehow I think you incumbent made a good point. on all of the companies to participate. I think you've made a good point, and I will back down. You are correct, sir. And I will give you a back rub. Mm. Okay, this is getting weird. <laughs> it's bro love. I don't want to be sitting between the two of you. New, studying, new study at the uh, University of California, Irvine, and U.S. Army, a joint effort. Uh, they found some office workers who were willing to give up their email. Actually, they oh, yeah. said, the, uh, the, the professor who did the study said, actually, it was really hard to find office workers who'd give up their email. So we went to their bosses, and the boss said, it's okay, you don't have to get email. We found that when you remove email, says Gloria Mark, informatics professor, University of California, yeah. Irvine, we found that when you remove email from workers' lives, they multitask yeah. less, and they experience less stress. And in fact, people with email switched windows an average of 37 times an hour. I heard your whole thing on this. People with it. Well, the, for those who didn't listen to the radio show, I'm may I just complete this thought? Yes, you may. I'm sorry. Because I got scolded by various emailers saying, you can't be picking on Leo for his radio show. He does the radio show for a different audience. That's true. But I. But now that you're in my audience, I think you have the right to talk back so. to the radio. So uh, those who have email switch windows 37 times an hour. Those who did not, they were on an email vacation 18 times an hour. The professor... <laughs> Theorize. And, oh, they tested the cortisol levels, uh, the stress chemical levels in yeah, these people, and it was boy. through the roof. I don't buy This, it. Leo, is why I love Google+. Plus. I have one stream smooth, for email. Well done. Smooth. Also, well done. I don't switch to Twitter. I don't switch to, you know. How often do you check Google+. Plus? I, I never Every stop checking it. Every five seconds. I, one, He's checking it constantly. He just posted one, again. One third of my, <laughs> one third of my screen with my, with my mind. One third of my screen is Google Plus. I never stop checking it. And you it's, don't find that stressful? Not at all. I'm very. It's calm. Out. It's like yeah, a very. river. It's it's sort of like plugging in in the Matrix. Where yeah, you, I just want to point once out. Once you read the raw code that yeah. you used to you used to redirect Elgin.com to yeah. Google Plus, you don't do that. I anymore. will. I will. It's a, have you a temporary lost glitch. faith? No, it's a temporary glitch. I'm switching to Hover.com. Oh, all right, and they'll take care of it. What us. is yeah, Hover? It's I never heard of it. It's another no? advertiser. It's another advert, but not for this show. Who didn't pay? Well, uh, we week. love all our advertisers. You Let's should use Hover. You should use Stamps. Mm. So um, you think that this is somehow less stressful because it's why? Because it's one thing. I'm not switching. I used to be on 12 to 15 social networks plus email plus AOL chat. This is why I mean? it's less stressful. That's the 
That's the see how see that's how on peaceful the, that is. That's very peaceful. But I yeah. use the I, I use it instead of email. I use it instead it's of got text. A picture messaging. of an island. I use it instead of. Is there email like on an that astronaut island? in that photo? Yeah. If you if you if you, you post like something, you, if you, you look like you just landed on the island. He's like, this is right. Mike Island. I, I have the feeling I'm about I, to get Mike vo- Island. I'm going to get voted <laughs> off any second now. But um, no, if, if you if you address a Google Plus post to somebody who doesn't use Google Plus, right? They get an email. They get an email. And then the email links them back to the post. They post on the post, and you sit there and have essentially a chat conversation instead of email. Are you curious, just when I look at your site and you see that I have you in three circles, are you at all curious what circles you're in? Uh, I don't want to know because I'm afraid of the answer. <laughs> you realize that what my biggest they? circle has like you 400 say, people I, in it, I and can... it's called Awesome People Who I Have No Idea Why I'm Following. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, but can I guess who they are? You yes. have him in in uh, in show guests, tech journalists. I have him in. You have him in tech journalists yep. and friends, technology and best of G plus, best, best of G plus, best of G plus. He is not in. You actually friends. have a circle called best of G plus. Yeah, I probably I have s- one too, but I'm the only no, one in it. Brother, so. <laughs> I do have a circle called sexy, but you're not in that. I don't know what? why. You have a whole you bunch of people in that one. Labeled sexy. <laughs> I'm not in it. Wait, let me just take care of Who's that. Who's in Evernote? Okay. <laughs> put him on sexy. The Evernote circle, I think, shares what I put there to Evernote. I believe that's how I set that up. It works? I don't know. I never use it. I don't like Well, let's, let's get back to the email topic because this Press. is what I think is going on. You this, you said, wow, this is interesting. Now I know this and that. You went on and on I was it. right. I am right not me- to get email. That's what you would. It's impossible see for you to stre- say that. See how stressed out he is. Because because <laughs> you do see, not you look see? at your email. You say you oh I check it twice a day. Can I? It's bull crap. You never look at your email. And I, you never respond to anybody with can, email. So you don't even use email. <laughs> so to be making these value judgments based on this bull crap story done by the army, which seems dubious. <laughs> you know why the army's doing it? They want to send email to the soldiers on the front. I'm sure and they so they're do. trying to figure out if this will increase their stress level. They're in combat. Okay, so. right. So, so this <laughs> is is about as bogus as any topic you've ever discussed on your on your uh, uh, tech guy I'll, or whatever I'll tell you, you call this yourself. Much, though Leo has he's. He's ruined me for email. Like, after listening for two years about how you talk about, like, hey, emails come in. Some of them I grab, some of them not so much. Like, I've been infected with that bad habit. I no longer and feel now, any obligation. I will check email, but I don't feel any. guys thing. You got this from the radio. Because I one time we were doing, it was, I think we were doing a show together. It was years ago. And there was some old radio hack that was running one of these other he ran some game, online gaming or something. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that yeah. guy. And so we're, he's sitting there. He, all these, these messages are coming in. He says, oh, he's just hanging up on him like a maniac, which is what you used to do. Yeah. Just, oh, I don't like the guy's name. Oh, bull crap. Just hang up on him. Hang, hang up, hang, <laughs> hang up, hang up, hang up, hang up. Oh, Judy's on. Let me talk to her. <laughs> so meanwhile, this is what you, you have to say. She sounds cute. Exact same thing with email. Yeah. You would like, um, you would actually love, in fact, you should play. Uh, Kevin Pollock's, you know, chat show. Yeah, I've they have a game it. on it where they do a Larry Larry King game. Yeah, where you come up, where you come up with like the weirdest possible subject, and then you go, and then you come up with a funny name and a city that they're from, and it's like you're you're doing it as Larry King. Yeah, it's very funny. I doesn't come across. New Mexico. You're on right, but the, and the subjects. Fun. Anyway, it's it's a funny bit if you ever listen to. I've Kevin listened. I, I, I actually, to be Kevin's honest, very funny. Yeah, yeah, except with a hat. <laughs> uh, is there any? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go around. Anybody have anything else? Anything else that they want to talk about? Anything else that's exciting? Uh, this, uh, I don't know. Like some of the stuff you, you were talking about, video game stuff. We got the ninety nine dollar oh, Xbox, yeah, yeah, coming out, which is a rumor, not true. Yeah, we uh, don't know. It, it does sound as though this but is the a idea. Bit of a, is it's, it's a monthly subscription, so yeah. you can continue to use your Xbox. But it's subsidized, right? right. So it's like you now, get the Connect and the Xbox for ninety nine bucks, right? But you pay t- ten bucks a month or something. Fifteen bucks a month, yeah. yeah. And uh, but uh, is that a good idea? You think? I think it's smart to horrible in, idea. Why? I think it's a good idea. Really? You end up paying more. <laughs> If, a lot more. If you had just bought everything right up front, you would do better. But in order to do that, you would have to decide to yourself. And this is one of those things about accountability and the way we perceive ourselves. Like, if you're going to invest $400 in an Xbox, a Connect, and two years of Xbox Live, you will identify, self-identify yourself as a gamer. 
And what Xbox has to deal with the fact is that they are a very valuable media consumption device or device for people who don't perceive themselves as gamers. You got HBO Go is an app on on right, Xbox right. available. You so got that's who Netflix this is for. All these things. I think it's it's for, it's the it's to replace buy. the cable bill. Uh, for people who could be seduced, like they're just and keep in mind, this is only retail outlets. Well, right? it's only a hundred dollars. Exactly, and they're like a hundred dollars and fifteen bucks a month. Yeah, sure. You know, how much did Web TV cost? I don't pay a lot of I don't play a lot of games, but it seems like that would be fun. And so they jump in and do it. I think this is a very smart move on their part from a marketing perspective. It's still a bad purchase, and most of the people listening to this show would probably, not go near it. Yeah, probably. And, already and I think that there's a certain resistance to a yet another fifteen dollar a month bill. Sure, that we can't underestimate. Even Granny and Grandpa know that. Yeah. Do you but, want another $15 a month bill? We have too many already. That's true. But again, you don't think about those things. We, you just think of, oh, I've always liked the Xbox, and it's only $99. Finally, I can jump in. And Jay Spin in our chat month. room, it says it's the same morons who buy rent, who rent to buy rent to own furniture. Sure. No, that, and that's great. <laughs> but I'll tell you, that's an important thing if you want to legitimize it. Because think about own. this is the kind of thing we talk about on <laughs> no, Frame Rate. In a year, you will own this crappy sofa. Yeah. Great. <laughs> only thirty nine ninety five a month. But this is the kind of thing we talk about on Frame Rate all the time is the the, the battle for uh, for for living room new media oh, dominance, huge. right? But this it's is not totally the solution. Wide open. When you're competing in a world where there's a seventy dollar uh, Roku box for free. Yeah, but After, here's the thing. You know. If you're Joe on the street who's not really familiar either with video games right. or with new media, and I try to c tell you, this you is can why either buy Everybody should watch our shows, your shows, and all these shows, because you learn not to do stupid stuff like buy that crap. <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah, is absolutely. that not right? No, that's 100% right. Because it's moronic. Right. Yeah. Now, Diablo 3, you excited? May 15th. Uh, Yes-ish. Uh, Diablo's, I don't know. You it's, played it already. It's like, uh, we just call them monster pinata games. Yeah, it's like you, you run click, around. Click, 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 click. Yeah, at some point that, that wears down on me. To be honest, I'm way more excited about Orcs Must Die 2, which is like a... Uh, it's, what? It, Orcs Must Die is the best two. tower defense two. game ever oh, created. Oh, I love Nobody's tower defense. Ever. Oh, but, tower but this defense. is tower defense from a first-person perspective. You so run around you're the, oh, inside oh, the first castle. first-person shooter tower defense. That's Fantastic. Okay, stop mocking me, sir. <laughs> Dude. Dude. Orcs Must That's Die. Me, sir. More is, this, is, is this uh, like it comes on a disc? Orcs Must Die 2. <laughs> it's going to be digital distribution. It's, it adds co-op to it. You run around basically... The, the orcs come bashing in, and they try to make it to the rift. And meanwhile, you spent, you earn money by killing orcs. You spend the money by building traps, and then they die in these awesome, visceral, gore-splattering ways. This does sound like fun. And mm. it's all first-person perspective, so it's like you could decide to spend your money on increasing your your weapon powers or on building more traps. And, uh, again, orcs And this is on too. Steam? Uh, yeah, it's on Steam. Uh, Steam. Yeah, yeah. Steam's good. Steam I love. Oh, Steam is brilliant. Steam is now. That's a billion dollar company. Oh my God, you're not kidding. Yeah. Valve. And there's all kinds of talk about there being some kind of hardware and development. Here you can see what he's doing. You got this river of orcs. So he's coming still in. defending against orcs. Yeah. Or whatever. It's all first person perspective. Right. You're, you're, you're preparing. Money. I like this. And then plus, it's like if you're better at first person shooter type stuff, you could rely on your own ability to cast spells to kill them all. Here's another rumor I'm excited about: Skyrim MMO. You know, this is an interesting thing, and I understand from a business perspective why they would want to do that. If so this was Skyrim, through, which is which is kind of an, an anachronism in gaming, was a standalone game. You don't play against other people. You play against AIs. You're playing against a game just you, by right. yourself, all alone. And the number one thing people say when they play it is that it feels like an MMO, but it's all just for right. you and but your But I experience. like it better because it's you. Well, because you, you don't have to rely on other There's people. There's no teabaggers. Right. <laughs> right. Two, two if you know what I mean. And yeah. I'm not talking politics. <laughs> I like the fourth-person shooters. <laughs> really? Yeah, they're the uh, best. I can't wait to get one of those. It's, it's in the future, an old man talking about people he shot. First-person shot. shooter in 3D. <laughs> Adds up to four person. <laughs> but here's the interesting question on Skyrim is uh, it makes sense from a business perspective. You want to invest, if you've invested this much time and effort to create a world and a set right. of systems. Why not make it a engine, public world? Why not make, turn it into a money factory? Right. But the problem is from a positioning standpoint, you already have uh, World of Warcraft, which is, of course, the 800 pound gorilla. And you have essentially a copy of the exact same gameplay mechanic with Star Wars The Old Republic. That's what a fourth person shooter is. You're watching someone else play Warcraft. That would work. Yeah. That's pretty good. I won the game last night. <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> watching. But the problem with uh, Skyrim is that I actually suspect it's too close to World of Warcraft to get to get yeah, a big it's market not different share. enough. Yeah. 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 Well, and plus most of the things people love most about Skyrim are not going to be in the MMO. 
Oh, that's depressing. Yeah. Like dragons? Uh, I, I don't know about dragons, but dragons. certainly the gameplay mechanic, it's yeah. not going to be... Yeah. What was great about Skyrim is run around with your left hand and right hand. You can right. use a shield and a sword or two it's different a spells or whatever. It's combat game. I None of that's seen. in Hey, there, when you go back to Austin... Yes. Hopefully soon. Uh, <laughs> make sure you uh, meet up with Adam Curry. He lives there. I didn't realize he was in Austin. He's I would moved freaking to love Austin. to come he's see him. Au- you know also who moves to Austin, Austin is... Uh, 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 you know that guy. <laughs> you got to do the thing. You got to do the, the string guy. through the nose. Or you, that the, one the human crazy straw. Where you have the you have the string Ryan going through Shroud, your eyeball and then in and out of both nostrils and then out the ear. See, that that's original reporting. That's that's what every article. <laughs> did writes. you do that or did you hammer a nail into your ear? See, that's I oh, screw both of you guys. Okay. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for being here. Mr. John C. Dvorak is found often, at least twice a week. Often. At, at uh, noagendashow.com. That's right. And then, of course, there's Channel Dvorak. There's uh, those other shows that you do, well, of which there are columns. many. And there's columns uh, Yeah, galore. DH Unplugged. I do that. I do the What's twi- that? I do the Twitch That's show. That's new. DH Unplugged? DH Unplugged is the Dvorak Horowitz stock market show. Mm. With the, you that know guy's Horowitz. still around? Yeah. Yeah, he said you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, get in the cash. He told me that. That was back when you should have been in cash. And I, and I, well. It, You're in cash now. This is like a cash yeah, machine. Yeah, jeez, I'm in cash. <laughs> uh, Channeldevorak.com. <clears throat> yeah. And we're going to, I am, uh, because I know you all love, and if you're if you're listening, I apologize, but John, just to describe this, John is wearing a canary yellow <laughs> shirt. It's striped, white looks, and canary yellow, and big stripes. I mean, jo- Brian Wilson, a, Beach Boys. It's, a, it's like a referee shirt, but yellow. He but looks yellow. like a soda jerk so from the jerk. 1950s. <laughs> and I'm going to buy a dozen of these in every color for John. I'm going to find them, I'm going to buy them, and you will have them. Ah, great. Let me, let me look at the label. He can show up shirtless, and you can hand him his shirt for the oh, show. Oh, it's Abercrombie and Fitch. Let's do that. <laughs> He's an Abercrombie girl. <laughs> All right. Brian Brushwood is at Scam School. That's what brought you to town uh, this week, right? You yeah, we did. Man, we episode. shot 13 episodes of Scam I School. I saw you uh, teaching Veronica Belmont to eat fire. We are, I taught a bunch of the Rev3 hosts, hosts how to eat fire. And uh, we did. Um, we actually had world champion magician Michael Amar out for five episodes. It was fantastic. It's uh, Man, it's really an you exciting went to a magic time. shop? Yeah, we did. Oh, look at that. You do read all these books. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, uh, of course, the big news is the Scam School book. We got book two coming out. In June, so it's a success, I guess. Uh, scamschoolbook.com. And on June 19th, we're going to drop... You know, we failed to hit number one in the U.S. God, I tried so hard. We hit... Uh, but you know who we lost to? Who? Was that erotic BDSM... Oh, yeah. 50, 50 Shades, Shades of Grey, Grey Volume yeah. 3. Brother. That is we, an awesome book, we, by the way. Uh, <laughs> we beat... We, there were if three it had video... Mm. That would be sexy. Mm-hmm. We beat the bottom of those three, but we still that's have books. Funny, that's funny. That's, that's, hey, that's hey, what I mean. Right. Nailed it. That's, that, and the best way to buy now it's on iBooks, Kindle, and Barnes and Noble's Nook. But Correct. the best way to buy it is on the iBooks because that's got the video, the audio. That's the one. Everything's embedded yeah. and it looks yeah. pretty. And that's also the store that seems to be the most vulnerable to a cheating attack, which is what we're good at. So our next attempt is going to be yeah, book get number two. one here. Book two comes out on June 19th, scamschoolbook.com. It's going to be freaking rad. I'll tell you, people are saying really nice things about it. People it's a great book. I can't believe you could changer. do another one so quickly. It's almost as if... Yeah, it's as if you should have done one big one to begin with <laughs> instead of ripping off your customers. What a scam. <laughs> you actually can't. There's a there's a, there's a a maximum file size ah, that you get. So oh, you there it as is. much as we could. made wow. you do this. See? Go to yeah. elgan.com oh, to find out what Mike homework. Elgin is up to. And, of course, he's very prolific. Just share your sexy circle, and then people will be following me. And yeah, I'm going to share that. Everybody wants to know the sexy circle. Yep. Yep. And yep. I'm also, even though I personally only use Google+, Plus, my Google+, Plus stream automatically goes to Facebook, Twitter, and a bunch of other places. So See, that's the way to do it. Yeah. And you're, you're platform agnostic. That's right. I'm, yeah. I'm everywhere except for I personally only use Google+. Plus. So but you don't have sure. to use anything else. That's right. Because if you follow them on Facebook, how do you or Twitter, do that? How do you post from Google Plus uh, over? It's the, plug-in, it's right? a different thing. Well, there, it's different things for different. Like I use Manage Flitter for Twitter, <laughs> automatically posts. Um, I use RSS for my email newsletter. It goes out every day. I don't even touch it. Sometimes I don't even read it. This is this is really clever because yeah. basically, yeah, he's got this. He's plugged in. You're just writing, writing on Google Plus, right. and it's automatically feeding on all these uh, right. sources. It's I've very... been wanting to get together with him over coffee, <laughs> you so I did like. Learn his tricks 
because so he is the king of this. He really is. Yeah. Uh, I agree. So, 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 okay. So, if, if what you're telling me is all you do is write posts for Google Plus, yes. and you have a series of of systems that yes. automatically aggregate and publish Everywhere. on different platforms. Yes. I will get with you and steal all well, your. Well, everybody wants together. it. John's you could write a book. Yeah. You should. Yeah, yeah a book. I'm buying. I am buying. So when I go, for instance, now I have to say the the negative of this is yeah. when you go and follow him on Twitter. What you see is. Kind of it's less than perfectly formatted for Twitter. Yeah, less the, than native. But the link takes you and 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 um, and Tim O'Reilly talked about doing this as well. The link takes you back to Google Plus where you can have a real conversation. You can't have a conversation on Twitter. Right. Give me a break. Right. No, that's not Just, true. You could have conversations. Eh, yeah, you can. I agree with Schwood. Eh, I don't know. It's, it's, I, it's hard. Conversations to follow. on Google Plus are so good. Yeah, it's, it's so hard to follow without you know. threaded. Uh, discussion. It's and, very hard to follow. It's yeah. not that. Bad. I block all the trolls and idiots, and and so Whoa. everybody who's who who. who See, I listen to trolls. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, like it's one of those things. It's like no matter how hideous what it, they have to say is, there's a chance that somewhere in there will be an insight that will be valuable. So it's like I try to I try to roll with anyone who I'm not asking. Everyone's going to troll me on Twitter now, and yeah, they no, should. I just he, block. He just them. asked for it. Hey, you know, there's going to be, this is going to be. Uh, uh, it was kind of a slow news week, but next week I think is going to be the greatest. Let's find out, shall we? Tom Merritt. Oh, is Tom here? What was Tom here? All right, Tom. Hey, thanks, Leo. Good to have you back. Here's a look at what we'll be talking about on Tech News Today in the week ahead. Monday, May 7th, Sprint starts taking pre-orders for the HTC Evo 4G LTE. <laughs> Tuesday, May 8th, Next kicks off in Berlin. Wednesday, May 9th, 4J Studios is getting Minecraft ready for a release on the Xbox 360. Yay. Thursday, May 10th is LA Demo Day. And Friday, May 11th, Gadget. Live comes to Chicago. Let's look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Tom Merritt and Tech News Today every Monday through Friday for your Tech News Fix, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC on twit.tv with Tom and Sarah and IS. Hey, I want to thank Becky Worley for uh, filling in last week. You were here with Becky. She yeah. did a great job. Did she do a good job? Yeah, it was yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I was in Norway. And then the week before, did Tom do it uh, the week before? No, you were, you, you were here. You were here. I, you were here. You were just for one Sunday. I have a body confusion problem. <laughs> I thought I was Tom, but I wasn't. Body switch morphia. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Make sure you tune into it every Sunday. You can watch live 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC, or you can always download audio and video after the fact. We make it available in a variety of formats at twit.tv. Uh, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Another twit is in the can. God bless America. This is amazing.